Moore hit Patterson Bell Tower and brings every hour to remind the students of the generosity of the families that have the Bell Tower named after them here at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. Now, where exactly are we? Let's take a look at this border war situation. You see where the two schools are, meeting number 55. It's been the first time in 16 years, though, that these teams have met. UNC won that last game, 21 to 17, and there we are right there now. Take a look at the stadium in the present time. Colors everywhere for these two schools. Lots of Carolina blue, North Carolina blue, that is, and of course, lots of the Garnet and Black for South Carolina. Watch for Brandon Tate today. One of the very few in college football history to have a punt return and a kickoff return for a touchdown in the same game. And you see what he's done already this season. We'll see if Ryan Suckup kicks away from him. He does not. One of the fastest players on the Tar Heels, and he is down to the 25-yard line. And that's where North Carolina will begin. Their starting lineups presented by Best Buy and presented by our own Brad Doherty. Freshman running back Anthony Ells is coming off of two very strong performances in the past two weeks. He joins big play wide receivers Hakeem Nix and Brandon Tate. The offensive line will try to keep up positive momentum if they're missing the big center, Scott Linehan, the only senior on the offensive line. And Brad's just a couple hours away hanging out with an NASCAR crew for that race in Charlotte. <laughs> That's right. Convenient for him. We'll take a look at T.J. Yates, redshirt freshman quarterback, has not thrown a touchdown pass in his last three games. He had nine before that. LZ on the ground in South Carolina. Now the run defense, Jesse, has been vulnerable this year, but they jump all over it this time. Now, let's get from Todd Ellis, who was the last redshirt freshman quarterback to start for the University of South Carolina. Our starting lineup is presented by Best Buy. Defense starts with Eric Norwood, the motor, had two fumble recoveries for touchdowns a week ago. The middle linebacker is now held down by Marvin Sapp, who replaces the injured Jasper Brinkley. He's done a fine job. The best pound-for-pound -pound hitter in the Southeastern Conference, Emmanuel Cook at safety. You can tell he's in radio now. Elsie again, and this just isn't any place to go. Absolutely not. Pick out your favorite Gamecocks tackler, and you'll have him there. Eric Norwood, the National Defensive Player of the Year in there. Same with Rodney Park, that strong side linebacker, losing three. So a team that ran for 183 last week, Jesse, in a bit of a hole. Absolutely, and that's not what they want to be doing against the South Carolina defense. We've talked about already, this is the best pass defense in college football, but they're also the fourth best defense on third down. The last thing North Carolina wants to do today is get these negative plays, put themselves in position like these third and longs like we're seeing right now. 26% is all the South Carolina defense allows on third down. That's Tate in motion. And a little bit of a mix-up. Fans looking for some sort of a flag, but really that pass was not at all catchable. So North Carolina will go three and out on their first drive. South Carolina doing a nice job just playing a big, deep zone coverage, making sure everything stays underneath them in North Carolina, not able to convert on that big third and long. South Carolina should get the football back here in nice field position. Captain Munnerlin back deep for South Carolina. Averaging about six and a half yards per return. And he's fast, too. He runs a 4-3-5-40. He is dangerous anywhere on the field. Starting defensive back. One of the things Steve Spurrier did in the middle of the season, not only was he unhappy with his quarterbacks, he was also unhappy with his special teams, and he's inserted more regulars in the special teams. Look out here for the block punt. And may have gotten a hand on that. Might have been Matthews that broke in there and gotten a fingernail on that. So South Carolina, after the 38-yard punt, will get excellent field position. Let's go back to Todd Ellis for today's starting lineups presented by Best Buy. The quarterback, Chris Smelly, trying to go 4-0 as a starter. The tailbacks will be Mike Davis and Corey Boyd, a dynamic duo who average over 4.5 yards a carry. And at wide receiver, Kenny McKinley, 32 of the 52 receptions to wide receivers go to Kenny. In the offensive line, Jamon Meredith bench presses over 450 pounds. You did that, didn't you? When you were <laughs> All day long, I did. I thought so. Inside look this time for South Carolina, and that is Kenny McKinley. And he has become the number one receiver for Chris Smelly. By far, Charles Brown and Deontay Williams on the stop for North Carolina. Kenny McKinley is the big playmaker for the South Carolina offense. And you see right here early them trying to find creative ways to get the balls in his hands quick, allowing him to do something with his feet. 
Not a whole lot of time in between plays here for South Carolina. This is Corey Boyd. And a good job by North Carolina's Jermaine Strong to kind of cut that corner off and, and prevent that from becoming a big game. South Carolina. South Carolina here trying to catch the North Carolina defense off guard a little bit by hurrying up the play count. You can protect your quarterback and protect your running backs by changing it up. This North Carolina defensive line, they get a great jump on the ball. They're very active and very athletic. And that's something we should look for the rest of this game, trying to keep these guys off balance. Spurrier has said this is maybe the best running back tandem between Corey Boyd and Mike Davis that he has ever had. And of course in Gainesville with the Gators, he certainly had some great ones. Like Smelly has changed plays. Well, that's going to get him a little bit of trouble with Coach Spurrier on that one as he tried to get it to Corey Boyd. And so despite the great field position, the Gamecocks will have to get rid of the football. That's a really good job by the UNC defense really taking away what South Carolina wanted. They had a three-step game. They had some slant routes thrown. And when that got taken away, Smelly wanted to swing the ball out to his running back. Just great pursuit by the UNC defense, able now to get the football back. Brandon Tate has a 58-yard touchdown to his credit already this season as a punt returner. With North Carolina blocked a punt against Miami last week. And Ryan Suckup will make sure that Brandon Tate does not return this kick. North Carolina gets the ball back to the 20-yard line. We'll see what they do with their offense. No score in the first quarter. Now this is our perspective that Jesse and I have here. You can tell who the home team is in this game by the quality of these seats, right? <laughs> yes, you can, absolutely. Always give the good seats to the visiting team. Now, of course, a big argument, and this has been big news in the newspapers in these two states, just who is the Carolina? Come on, Bob, is it north? Go. Is it south? Let's go! <laughs> been a pretty funny debate, actually. Going deep for Nix, and excellent coverage that time for South Carolina, provided by Brandon Isaac, the senior from Blackville, South Carolina. Brandon Isaac getting a start today. He's just going to match up on, on the receiver. Nix is just going to run right by him. The ball's a little bit underthrown, but it's a good job by Isaac going up and batting the ball away at its highest point. The Gamecocks a little shy in the secondary. Carlos Thomas, who often starts for Steve Spurrier, injured in practice on Tuesday. One of those scary injuries where he was briefly immobilized. He is all right, is with the team, but is not going to play. With more on that injury situation and more on exactly who is the North and South Carolina. And Vince Welch, what is the deal here? Well, it's very interesting. You know, the South Carolina fans, they believe they're the real Carolina. Even had T-shirts printed up saying uh, the real Carolina supporting the Gamecocks. They cite history back to the 1600s. Of course, they get a little argument from those wearing that uh, quote-unquote Carolina blue here this afternoon. Well, I'll tell you what, right now North Carolina can't shut them up with any offense. They've gone five plays, and they are minus four yards. Look out from behind. And that is the National Defensive Player of the Year, Eric Norwood. Two touchdowns on that Thursday night game against Kentucky. And what makes this defense so good on third down is you never know where their players are coming from. They line up four down, three down. You're going to see Norwood come from the left side of your screen in the backfield. He comes in untouched. It's a great job by Tyrone Nix, a D coordinator, dialing this up. It's what makes them so tough. Great pressure on the quarterback makes your pass coverage better. And that's one of the biggest reasons why they have the best pass defense in college football. So Terrence Brown, second time already. The odd thing is, Jesse, that South Carolina at the moment is a top 10 team mainly because of their defense. Now, and this is Steve Spurrier team, and we have possibly a delay of game penalty on the Tar Heels, which certainly can help the field position matters. And let's introduce our referee, Matt Austin from the Southeastern Conference. For the snap, delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. But that's the ironic thing about all this. Now, we all know what he's famous for, he being Steve Spurrier, but this is a defensive-oriented football team. Yeah, I think you have to give Coach Spurrier a lot of credit, too, because he's played a lot of these games early this season close to the vest, running the football, playing good defense. But I think we've seen the last couple weeks now them start to open it up more offensively. This kick doesn't have a lot of hang time. 
and not much of that forward spin either. So look where South Carolina will take over. Fantastic field position after the 36-yard punt. Well, we talk about it. Oh, you always associate the head ball coach with offense, but this is a fantastic defense. And Butch Davis said it's about as fast as he's ever seen. Yeah, they got great speed all over the place. They're able to get after the quarterback, and it's the secondary of this defense that is the strong point. They're smart players. They understand coverages. And because they get a great pass rush and they got smart players playing in the backside, they can play great pass defense. Second time the Gamecocks have had excellent field position the last time was their own 42. You see where they are now. Second drive for them. Haven't seen a first down in this game yet. We do now. A tremendous catch by Jared Cook. The sophomore from Sewanee, Georgia. And there's the first first down of the ball game, a 20-yard play. Well, this is a great example of what we talked about earlier. Chris Smelly throwing on time, throwing the ball into an area before his receiver gets there. He's throwing this ball to Jared Cook. You're going to see Jared Cook, the tight end. The ball's gone now. He's going to catch this pass across the other hash, but it's a good job, good timing by Chris Smelly trusting the area of the field to be there on time and that's the way coach Spurrier wants this offense operated it wasn't enough the statistics for Blake Mitchell were that awful I mean he's one of the best percentage passers in the history of the Gamecocks but obviously he didn't trust, trust the system, system. Well, we've heard all the jokes about the old ball and chain, and it turns out we've got some busted chains for the chain gang. Now, everybody has a backup set. I guess they don't need to bring it out just yet. Two, four, seven, eleven. Smelly, the SEC freshman of the week, twice this year for the Gamecocks. Immediate contact, but a fine catch that time by Dion LaCorn. Now, let's meet the North Carolina defense, presented by Brad Doherty and presented by Best Buy. Starting at defensive end, senior defensive end, Hailey Taylor, a big-time playmaker for the University of North Carolina who also leads the ACC in tackles for loss. At the linebacker position, walk-on Durrell Mapp, who happens to be a strong playmaker himself at the will linebacker. Freshman free safety, Deontay Williams, who also leads the team with three interceptions. That's your Tar Heel defense. Deepest penetration of the ball game. Looking end zone. And in and out of the hands, incomplete. North Carolina says they have the football, but the officials are ruling that it will not be a Tar Heel interception. That's Deont Deontay Williams right there. And he's a big playmaker back in the secondary for that UNC defense. This is a nice job again of Chris Smelly really dropping back and trusting the play. It's a little bit high, but Wesley Saunders, the third string tight end, he needs to come down with that. That's a catch he can make. But you see Deontay Williams. It doesn't have to be, you know, plucking it out of the air. He's got great instincts. Ball's a little high. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, and take a look at that again, Jesse. That was Wesley Saunders, the tight end, who couldn't quite hang on to that high pass. And all of a sudden, if we take a good look at that, he may have this. He, may, he, he very well may have had that. He's made a lot of plays for this defense this year back in that secondary. He's only a freshman, Deontay Williams. But what an impact he's had so far, this UNC defense. Let's take another look at this. You're going to see the ball it goes through his hands. Look at the instincts. Look at his ability to get down. The question is, did it touch the ground? Doesn't look like it. And it looks like that right hand is cradled under the football. See if we get a better angle right here. He dips down, catches it. Ball doesn't touch the grass there. The question is, did he get any help from the ground catching that ball once he made it near the sidelines? And what you see at home is exactly what the replay official is looking at. But it was called an incompletion. There's got to be evidence that suggests they can overturn that. I think there is, to be honest with you. Now, nobody really cares what I think. <laughs> I, my, my gut tells me this will be his fourth interception of the year. He's a former wide receiver. That may account for the way he was able to cradle that football and the instincts that you talked about. Absolutely. He's got great ball skills. And like I said, whether it's plucking it out of the air or catching it off ricochets, he's done it a lot this year already. Comes into the season with three interceptions, which leads the team. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands as called. Incomplete pass. Third down. Okay. Yeah. You're looking at me like, see, you were wrong, Dave. 
<laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, again, I don't, I, I, I don't know if there's any evidence to suggest. It looks like his body kind of blocks. See right here now, there's no question the ball didn't touch the grass there. I think right there. Maybe when, because the ball landed, looks like he's in the control, but he's he out of bounds. trapped it, absolutely. But just not a very great angle, though. Would have been the eighth North Carolina interception this season. Instead, third down and three for Smelling and the Gamecocks. Was he drawn off? It's Hailey Taylor who was spending a moment in the backfield. He's a sack master for UNC. Comes into this game. Six sacks on the season. It's third in the ACC. He's a force around the edge. They've had pretty good defensive players named Taylor at this <laughs> university, haven't they? One or two. Absolutely. A guy named Peppers wasn't bad either. Well, this is a long discussion. Maybe a little flinch from the left tackle, Meredith. Dead ball, offsides. 33 defense, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty results in a fourth quarter. You know, we talked about this earlier. Chris Smelly and his ability to change up the snap count. When you play on the road and you want to slow down the pass rush, you have to do that. He's done a good job of doing that so far early in this game. So South Carolina, which took over at the 48-yard line following the short punt on the bad field position the Tar Heels had. Certainly an easy field goal range for a fine kicker and Ryan Suckup. the ground and that is Boyd again first down and boy you see the way he handed out a little punishment that time no question they run the lead draw and they get a great play they've been a good offense though in the red zone this year 21 and 24 coming into this football game we'll take it Charles Brown on the stop following the 13 yard gain and now South Carolina of course red zone you got to figure that any South Carolina team of Steve Spurriers is going to do well. 16 touchdowns and 24 tries and 21 and 24 overall. Done a good job, and they've done a good job also mixing it up, running the football and throwing it. Boy, look for a second if that was going to pop wide open, and the Tar Heels defense closed very, very quickly. You know, it's funny, we haven't seen Mike Davis yet, but when we do, look at the separation. There's almost none. The amount of carry is almost identical. I mean, this is interesting that this two-headed backfield he's got working for him. It's almost like they're twins. You know, you look at these numbers, they're identical, like you said. And Coach Burner says this may be the best duo he's ever coached a running back. That's saying a lot, considering at Florida, he had Fred Taylor and Terry Jackson in the same backfield. Sixth play of the drive here. Carolina, a dart to Dion LaCorn. LaCorn's first touchdown catch of the year for Smelly, his seventh touchdown pass. Chris Smelly just looks good so far, doesn't he? This looks comfortable, looks sure of himself. Yeah, no pressure. Pressure. Or on this beautiful campus in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, you see your score and time, and you see Deion LaCorn, a touchdown catcher for South Carolina. There's the drive wrap-up, 213, and then it's his first college touchdown. South Carolina with 50 total yards so far, and North Carolina minus 7. Of course, for North Carolina, they're building a lot on the hope and the promise that Butch Davis is bringing with them with that resume. His success at Oklahoma State as an assistant with Jimmy Johnson, certainly what he did at Miami. He handed Larry Coker. Some have said that he handed him a national championship. Of course, Butch left to go to the Cleveland Browns, and he might have been the coach of that national title. You're, you're buying that, huh? Uh, yes, I do buy that. <laughs> I buy a lot of that. From deep in the end zone, opens up just for a moment, and then Brandon Tate is taken down. Flag comes down behind the play. Let's go to New York and hook up with John Saunders. And the Sports Center Minute, powered by Vizio. In case you missed it, Hawaii against San Jose State. 31 seconds left in regulation. Colt Brennan, two-yard touchdown run to tie the game at 35 apiece. And then Brennan goes nine-yard touchdown pass to Jason Rivers. Meanwhile, the Rockies are leading the NLCS. 
There's a look at Hawaii with their comeback again, called Brennan late. What we showed you a little bit before was the Rockies up 2-0 after a bases loaded walk in the 11th inning. Rockies 3-2 win. They've won 19 of their last 18. Tar Heels are calling for a block in the back, and that was the flag, so they go half the distance to the goal line, and now they have the worst field position they've had so far to start. Flag down again, and in a moment, so is T.J. Yates. So Casper Brinkley in on that sack, and let's find out what the flag is. Second sack already if this one holds up. South Carolina defense has been pinning their ears back so far, doing a good job of really disrupting what North Carolina is trying to do in the pocket. Offsides, defense number 51, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot, repeat first down. And that's why. <laughs> Explains a lot sometimes, doesn't it? Well, you Norwood a good came jump from, when you're offside. Norwood came from the other side with the first sack, so that erased that one, so it's still only one sack. Well, don't you think the problem here for the Tar Heels is their first three running plays have gone absolutely no effect. They've gone backwards. I'll tell you what, you wouldn't have expected that. South Carolina so far this year is second worst in the SEC against the run, but they've been playing a lot more stout so far today. So it's first and five. On the slant, first down, first, first down of the game for the Tar Heels, and Hakeem Nix will not give up very easily. Yes, he takes us through the touchdown pass from Smelly to LaCorne. This is really well drawn up by Coach Spurrier. We're going to see McKinley right here in the slot. He's going to run a bubble. It's going to take two players with him, and there's a big area in the back of the end zone for the slant route. You see it right there, the freshman, Deion LaCorne, able to get in the area. Nice job of timing by Chris Smelly, just throwing it in. Nice catchable two, balls. That's four, one thing Coach Spurrier says seven, about I got him. It he throws nice catchable passes. So the Tar Heels, thanks to a penalty in that 11-yard game, have worked their way out of the shadows of their own end zone. Let's go! And continue to move the ball down the field as Brooks Foster makes the catch. Tackled by Rodney Paul. Tonight, a full day of college football at ESPN concludes at 7.45 Eastern when Auburn looks to exact revenge for last year's loss to Heisman hopeful Darren McFadden and the Arkansas Razorbacks as both teams need to win to keep pace with LSU in the SEC West. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN tonight at 7.45 Eastern. College football lives here. Who do you like in that game? <laughs> Auburn. Uh, it's I like Auburn in that game. Yeah. I think they're a new team ever since Brandon Cox has kind of got going. I think Auburn's a new team. They've been running a lot of slants. A little bit of contact before the ball got there, and everybody in the light blue looking for a penalty on Brandon Isaac, and they're not getting it. There was, was a lot of physicality right there by Brandon Isaac playing very physical at the line of scrimmage. North Carolina fans want pass interference on this play. You're going to see right here now, Isaac's all over and bumps him with the shoulder, and Hakeem Nix forces the breakup and incompletion. Now we're looking at third and five, North Carolina. They've not been able to run the football yet. They're minus seven in rush yards. 0-2 so far on third down. Did the pump fake work? There's another flag down. That's going to be a first down if this play holds up again. It's Akeem Nix who came in as North Carolina's leading receiver. Hakeem Nix is the best route runner for North Carolina offensively. When you get these big third downs, they're going to be looking to get him the football one way or the other. Now, Nix says it's against the Gamecocks. And I think it is against Addison Williams. Holding defense number seven. Ten-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, North Carolina brings in some nice receivers. Now, the numbers on Brooks Foster are a little bit skewered because he missed a game with injury, but, you know, Butch Davis has that NFL background, Jesse. He wants a balanced attack. I'll tell you what, he has it. He's got big-time playmakers playing wide receiver. All three of these guys can score every time they catch the football. And really, it falls on offensive coordinator John Shoup. Find ways to get these guys the ball. Get them in space. Let them make plays because they all can do it. All right, got Combination of penalties and some good passes by T.J. Yates and North Carolina has moved the ball 31 yards on this drive so far. Direct snap to the back to Elzey. And this works pretty well. 
That is actually Greg Little, not number six, but number eight. And the direct snap is stopped by Eric Norwood, but for the first time today, the Tar Heels are in South Carolina territory. You know, and I love this football call because you have to find ways to run the football against this defense. You're not going to make a living at UNC throwing the football every down. And whether it's bringing in a more athletic type player to run the ball strictly out of the gun and give yourself an extra blocker at the point of attack, then you have to do that. A lot of credit. Great football call there by North Carolina. So the first trick play of the game didn't come from Steve Spurrier's mind. It came from Butch Davis and his staff. There's that pump fake again. And second down and ten coming up. Well, let's head down. Let's uh, once again introduce the field. Vince Wells. Vince? Well, guys, every player we talked to this week talked about the energy that they feel around Butch Davis. Uh, every player talked about how he's always viewing the situation as a glass half full, never half empty, always finding the silver lining. And I'll tell you, they talk about the energy on the football field in practice. And we can feel it here in the stadium today because there is unbelievable atmosphere here with this uh, North Carolina-South Carolina rivalry. And again, they go a different direction with this play, so they're getting a little creative that time. They run Joe Daly, who used to be a quarterback, not only in North Carolina, but at Nebraska before he became a wide receiver. Yeah, he's played quarterback at two big-time programs. Had a big game last week playing wide receiver. He had two big third-down conversions in that game against Miami. And again, North Carolina coaching staff finding ways to get their playmakers involved. That means you got to line them up in the backfield, let them take a direct snap, go get yards. So be it. UNC's willing to get that done today. Joe Daly was the starting quarterback quarterback opening day last year as a matter of fact for the Tar Heels after sitting out a season transferring from Nebraska. And I watch Norwood and they get him out of the play. Number 40 for South Carolina and that is incomplete. Would have been very close to the first down. Would have been an interesting spot. Captain Munnerlin on the defense. Now you've got an excellent kicker here in Connor Barth for North Carolina. Yeah, really, they are the X Factor presented by City. Both these kickers are outstanding and probably have futures getting paid to do this. Yeah, I think so too. Connor Barth, in particular, unbelievable. Look at that number. He's made 19 consecutive field goals. The NCAA record is 30. When we talked to him this week, he just has a good swagger about him. He's cocky, but in a good way. You want your kicker to be that way. He feels like he can make every kick he takes. He's taken into the tar pit right now from 49. And we've just seen the longest streak in the nation end at 19 in a row. Maybe we just jinxed him. I don't think it's our fault. He <laughs> oh, might man. think it's our fault, but we don't think it's our fault. So that streak is over. North Carolina remains scoreless. They're down by seven at home. Now, well, Connor Barth just had something happen to him that has not happened since November 2005. He missed a kick. And that's why our score remains 7-0 Gamecocks. That kick was blocked, too. As far as just flat missing one, it's even been longer. Now, a first look today at Davis, and he rumbles to near midfield. Mike Davis, the junior from Columbia, South Carolina. That's the home of the University of South Carolina. 15 yards on that. Well, Vince, uh, Connor Barth is certainly planning if the NFL doesn't work out, and we all think it will. He's got another career lined up. That's right, guys. He's uh, not only an extraordinary kicker, but a budding entrepreneur as well. He's designed these t-shirts and has his own t-shirt company called the Outrageous Clothing Company. And he designs the shirts himself, says because of NCAA rules, he can't use his name to promote them. But when he's uh, working on that NFL career as a kicker, he also can be a CEO of a budding and prominent company. Open. Thank you, Vince. And once again, that's Jared Cook, his second catch of the game. Deontay Williams among those in on the stop for the Tar Heels. But that's a head ball coach play right there, Jesse. I think we're really seeing Chris Melly grow up in front of our eyes right here. Again, taking his steps. One, two, three, four, five. And right now, down the seam, he's got Jared Cook as tight end. That was just four vertical, but it was a good job of Chris Smelly keeping the safety in the middle of the field with his eyes, not telegraphing where he's going with the ball. And like you see there, you just got to get it in the air. You don't have to throw a laser beam in there. Just put it in the area, trusting the receiver's going to run through the ball. Short of throwing a pick, what's the worst thing a Steve Spurrier quarterback can do on a play? Miss a touchdown. <laughs> well, he's trying for one right here. And he's got it. What a great catch. Kenny McKinley. He looked like Willie Mays. That's a good way to stay on the field. <laughs> 30 yards. And what a terrific job by Kenny McKinley 
readjusting himself on the run to find the football. This is just a go route. Smelly takes five steps and puts the ball up in the area, throws it on his outside shoulder though, but give McKinley credit, he ran the route and gave his quarterback room to lead him outside. You see why he's such a big, big, big playmaker, Kenny McKinley. So some adversity for the Tar Heels and success for the seventh ranked team in the nation. A three play, 68 yard drive and barely over a minute. The Gamecocks are ruling right now. North Carolina has got to answer. Dedication, hard work, while always looking to the future. That's what makes ACC student athlete. Me, taking the best parts of myself to become a better person. Making the pieces fit, achieving, preparing for tomorrow. Then it hit me. I'm also preparing for the rest of my life. The Atlantic Coast Conference, striving for tomorrow today. For over 50 years, a tradition of excellence has continued in the Atlantic Coast Conference. But it's not all about trophies and winning. It's also about sportsmanship, showing respect, rising above it all, and being a leader for both fans and players alike. In the ACC, we're working hard to continue making sportsmanship a tradition. The ACC, a tradition of excellence, then, now, and always. Fine catch and hookup. Smelly to McKinley in South Carolina has scored in their last two drives. In fact, Smelly's last three passes, a total of 57 yards and two touchdowns. And McKinley, you see his streak with the reception. He had that set earlier in the ballgame. And we mentioned at the top of the show, he clearly has become the go-to receiver for Steve Spurrier. So maybe Brandon Tate can make something happen for North Carolina. He's done it before. We see the quickness, and of course that stutter step slowed him down, and then the flag comes flying in from 20 yards away, so there will, may well be a penalty on the Tar Heels. Seems like there's just been so many flags already in this game, hasn't there? Usually one or two or During two the minutes. return, block in the back, 81 of the receiving team, 10-yard penalty, first down. Well, take us through this TD. You're going to see Kenny McKinley right here at the bottom of the screen, and he's just going to run a go, go route. It's very simple. You're going to see why this guy scored five touchdowns in the last five weeks. Just a five-step go route. He takes an inside release, gives himself room, allow the quarterback to throw it to his outside shoulder. Does a great job adjusting to the football, though. You're the best friend of a quarterback when you can adjust the balls like that. I'll tell you what, that was great. Well, we mentioned South Carolina short of the quarterback position. Kendrick Williams out for North Carolina. He was hurt in the game against Virginia Tech. And that's the first really good run play of the day, at least for Anthony Elzey. Let's go to New York and hook up with Matt Weiner, Matt. Hi there, Matt Weiner here in New York. I'll let you know what's happening around the country throughout the game. Let's get a Taco Bell update from the Big Ten. P.J. Hill fumbled Wisconsin's opening snap. Penn State took advantage with a 10-0 lead. Hill got a chunk of it back there with a one-yard touchdown one. His 11th rushing touchdown of the year cuts the lead to three. So LZ in his first positive run, as a matter of fact, he was in minus yards, his first from Gary's, but now he's in the plus side. And sitting down to make that grab for the Tar Heels. Zach Pianalto, the H-back. This is an interesting look. They'll sometimes give you a fullback. Sometimes they'll kind of go Joe Gibbs on him and give him an H-back <laughs> That's right. Line those guys up all over the place. <laughs> I think it's really important right now that North Carolina stays with the run. It's easy as a coach and players to look up at the scoreboard and say, oh, man, we're down 14 points. we got to start throwing. Stay with what you're doing. Run the football. Keep these third downs manageable. Give yourselves a chance to play in this game and win. You can see Munnerlin, number one, sort of walk up on that run play, and he didn't get involved in the tackle, but we did see in on the hit for South Carolina, Cody Wells, reserve linebacker from Bellevue, Florida. I'm going to ask you this. I'd be curious to find out. Both Steve Spurrier and Butch Davis have great ties to the state of Florida. How much do you think they're going to spend time down there trying to get players? Oh, I think they should spend a lot of time. I don't think it's just those two guys either. Oh, I think no. a lot of programs in the area geographically want to go down there and get kids because there's such an abundance of talent. 
So these games are big because kids in Florida are watching this football game. This is big for recruiting. And it's very big in the, in the Carolinas also. And nicely done on the fake. And once again, Greg Little showing some great play action ability that time. Even though you knew he wasn't going to throw the ball, gets him the first down. You know, it's a little wrinkle in the offense we're seeing so far by North Carolina. Getting Greg Little involved offensively in the shotgun. Whether it's the two read or whether running draws or sweeps himself. He's physical and he's got good vision. You see he's able to run inside and he's strong, falls forward, gets the first down. He is a freshman, Brandon Isaac on the stop, the senior defensive back. That could have been a big hit there for Munnerlin. He didn't quite get the hit that he wanted to on Brooks Foster. Well, the NASCAR Next Talk Cup Series continues at the Bank of America 500 at Charlotte on ABC tonight. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with NASCAR Countdown. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And Vince Boy, Charlotte is Jimmy Johnson territory. That Hendrick team looking good so far in the chase, huh? Running one, two, and you know when you've got Lowe's on the front of your car and you're running at Lowe's Motor Speedway, I think that makes you the favorite for tonight's race. <laughs> eh? You might well be right. Johnson's had a great run at that track, but of course Jeff Gordon was 41st in his last run there this year. And Elsey just lowered and put the boom on South Carolina's defense, and he is right at that marker for a first down. So let's take a look at the chase for the championship at the standings there. And Jeff Gordon on top. Of course, Jimmy Johnson already, though. Anybody who's from about where Tony Stewart is from behind may not have a chance to win the chase, but they can certainly have a lot to say about who does. So we'll see that tonight at 7 o'clock on ABC. Boy, in this last run, we just saw it by Anthony Elzey. You kind of see what offensive coordinator John Shoup's talking about, about a running back who can get extra yards after contact. Mm -hmm. That's something they were really excited about him. He's such a physical player. He considers himself a power runner. He's able to get yards after contact, fall forward. It wears on a defense when you give this guy the football one, two, three quarters into a game. Come fourth quarter, guys on the other side of the ball aren't going to want to stick their heads in there. Well, the last couple of weeks, Elzey emerged out of a very crowded backfield. North Carolina had four tailbacks at the beginning of the season and did not know who the number one guy was going to be. They do now. Let's go, let's go! And now North Carolina, this is their best drive of the game so far, pretty much, and looking for a penalty that's not going to get it. Hakeem Nix makes another catch. It's 19 plays for the Tar Heels, Jesse. Ten passes and nine runs. I like this play call, really. It's just basically an extended sweep to get their H-back, Zach Penalto, out in front of Hakeem Nix. Just very nice. Just get them on the boundary. Again, get your playmakers outside, away from all the bodies. Let them do something with the football. It's been a nice mix so far on this drive. An absolutely perfect day. We have seen a cloud anywhere in the skies of North Carolina. It's not around where we've been. 73 degrees to kick off. Right at the marker, and again, you see Elsie just carrying bodies. He won't give up. He wins the wrestling match with Emmanuel Cook and Melvin Ingram and does get a Tar Heels first down. That's exactly what we were talking about, wasn't it? Right there was the best demonstration you've seen all day. He gets hit right away once he's past the line of scrimmage and then carries a slew of defenders with him on his way to a first down. He comes out of the game just for the moment for an equipment check, so Johnny White will come in to replace him. That's a lot of leg strength in there, too, you know? <laughs> that is the end of the first quarter. When the banjo's working for us, actually. Second quarter about to start with Vince Welch and Jesse Palmer. I'm Dave Lamont. You see the weather is absolutely beautiful, and we thank you very much for joining us on a Saturday afternoon in North Carolina. Out of the backfield, in and out of the hands of Bobby Rome, the fullback with five catches on the year, but not six, at least not yet. It's been a lot of ball control so far on this drive. So far, really, in this game for North Carolina, you see right here, 11 runs and 11 passes, very balanced. They haven't taken a lot of shots downfield. And they've just been trying to control the tempo, slow this game down, do what they do best, pound it out. Doing a good job on this drive so far. And they were not able to run the ball the first couple of times. They have had greater success, changing the emphasis a bit. And then with White, they get maybe back to the line of scrimmage. You can see Casper Brinkley getting in there to slow the play down and making it easier for Captain Munnerlin. Now, Casper's twin brother, Jasper, an outstanding linebacker, a definite NFL prospect until he got hurt versus LSU. And he has decided, not officially, but about 99% that he will come back if he is allowed that medical red shirt and play one more year. And, well, he's 
If he has a healthy year next year, he is going to go high. Oh, that's a big help for this defense if he could come back. First team All-SEC last year. He was a preseason All-American this year. It hurt to lose him. But Marvin Sapp's done a nice job filling in. Yates, good athlete, former basketball player. Does not get the first down, but does make it a little bit easier for Connor Barth. Tell you what, this is positive for North Carolina. One thing T.J. Yates told us was, while he hasn't played a lot of quarterback in his life, the one thing he struggled with the most was pocket presence, knowing how to shuffle around and make positive plays happen. Although T.J. Yates does not get a first down on this play, the positive momentum, getting extra yards, gives them now a chance to kick a field goal to get past that 30-yard line, which is well in range for Connor Barth. Connor Barth, he told us this is the favorite of the two end zones to kick into, 45-yarder. His streak of 19 straight snapped earlier. And he is starting a new streak right there. So North Carolina has worked hard to get those three points. They are on the board. Now the ball goes back to the head ball coach. We'll see what his offense can muster in moments here. at Keenan Stadium on the campus of the University of North Carolina. You get those eight, nine dollar haircuts anymore. In Gainesville, it cost you probably about a buck fifty for that one. <laughs> now you knew we were going to get you sometime. Yeah, I was waiting for it. Great kickoff by Connor Barth. And no chance for South Carolina to get the return. So Chris Smelly got a hot hand right now with a couple of touchdown passes. And quick scoring drives for South Carolina as well. All right, let's see how you, we saw you throw a touchdown pass. Let's see how you do with our Aflac trivia question. We're talking about some of the, the great coaches in the game. You're looking at them today. With last week's win over the eighth-ranked Kentucky Wildcats, Steve Spurrier now 15-0 against UK. Which head coach has the most wins without a loss versus one team? Interesting. Everybody think about that for a moment, and we'll come up with an answer. A little misdirection this time. Back they go with Boyd, and he gets close to the first down. Good job there, Darrell Mapp and Deontay Williams on the stop. That's about seven, maybe even eight-yard gain. What's well, been impressive so far to me on offense for South Carolina, not only just Chris Smelly, but the way this offensive line has come out and played so far. Coach Burger told us earlier this week that his own line has played very average in the last few weeks. They kind of got stymied the last few weeks. He started with LSU, but they're running the ball well so far today. And it's Boyd who's doing some damage again. Between he and Davis, they have run the ball well. That's going to be a first down for South Carolina. Gain of seven, so they picked up 15 yards on the ground. Hey, Vince, what about this uh, South Carolina offensive line? Steve Spray earlier this week uh, termed it very average, but they've started five different players at guard and center. Webb Brown has been hobbling with a sprained knee, so I think as soon as these guys uh, get settled on a, on a group and everybody gets healthy, they're going to be pretty good. We've certainly seen some indications of that here today, protecting Smelly and opening up some holes. Now, Smelly has not been sacked yet, and he won't be on this play. Wide open. That's, That's Leonard Stafford, the fullback, and that looked very easy. Just a very simple dump over the middle. I'll tell you what, this is impressive because it's not easy for a young quarterback to do this. As young quarterbacks, you want to make all the throws all the time downfield. Chris Smelly on this occasion does a good job of just taking what the defense gives him. He takes his drops, looks in the area, it's covered. Just check it down to your fullback, Leonard Stafford. Let him make positive yards for you. Chris Smelly right now, I must say, is running Steve Spurrier's offense very, very close to perfection. He's playing very well. He must be doing well. I haven't seen that visor come off yet. That's usually a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> haven't seen this eye formation very much either. And a look at how he jumped through the hole and turned the corner. A great job by Corey Boyd. But there is a flag down after the 12-yard gain. And it didn't look like the personal foul mascot, well, excuse me, penalty, I should say. Let's go on Face to mask. Matt Weiner. And Defense, up there, 31. Matt. Five yards. All right, Dave, the number one team in the country on the bluegrass of Kentucky. And a little good fortune for the Wildcats. Andre Woodson's pass is tipped right into the hands of T.C. Drake. But back come the Bayou Bengals, cashing in on his own 55-yard run. Charles Scott from a yard out. Seven all as LSU tries to keep up the nation's longest win streak. It's a five-yard face mask penalty. Sets up an even better situation for the Gamecocks. They've scored on their last two drives. Well, that might... 
might be a penalty, and yes it is. Intentional grounding looks like the call from the referee. Great pressure by Marvin Austin, only a freshman out of Washington, D.C., and one of the most highly sought-after defensive players in the country a year ago. And you see why right there. They bring the weak blitz. Potential ground one. Number seven in the offense. Ball will be placed in the spot of the foul. Loss of down. Second down. Jermaine Strong comes on the weak corner blitz from the left side of your screen, and Mike Davis has to block him. He just kind of gets beat out, but you see the pressure up the middle from Austin. And Smelly forced to just throw that ball away. That's when he'd probably rather just eat, take the sack, live to play another day. Then he's got second, and you see 24. That decision will get him a visor throw. E.J. Wilson nearly had a chance at a touchdown for the Tar Heels. Wow, wow, that could have been a big play for North Carolina. E.J. Wilson does a great job of just being patient, and he reads the swing pass all the way to Mike Davis. All he has to do is just catch the football. You see E.J. Wilson, you see him trail off at the last second. Great awareness, just got to catch the football. How does Smelly not see him, or does he see him? Well, I think it's one of those plays where his eyes are downfield and he feels a pass rush, but obviously when you're getting ready to throw the ball, you've got to check out that area. All of a sudden now, third in California, South Carolina. They go underneath to Davis. And they may be playing for the field goal. It's going to be a long field goal for Ryan Suckup, though. 56 yards. Darrell Mapp makes the stop. So an interesting decision now for Steve Spurrier from the 39-yard line following that 10-yard gain. Longest field goal of the year for Suckup, 45 yards. He could go with, well, either way, Brian Suckup is likely to be on the field since he also punched the game <laughs> He guy. does both. I'll tell you what, though. We hear a lot of people talk about Ryan Suckup and the big leg he has. I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't in his range. Now, Look, something he unveiled the other night, Jesse, if you watch the game against Kentucky, and we both got a chance to see that, he will run to his right, preferably, and do a little rugby punt and try to knock it out of bounds. It's really kind of becoming more in vogue now, too. It seems you see more punters around the country starting to do that. I think it gives your coverage team a bit more of a chance to get downfield. And a flag down all the way in the back of the five-yard line, so this has to be some sort of substitution deal. Or maybe delay a game. Dead ball, delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. Well, that makes sense. Nothing wrong with that. It might not be a bad thing for South Carolina. Maybe give them a little bit more space to punt this in. Fourth penalty against the Gamecocks for 20 yards. Now, how often does Steve Spurrier talk to his lineman during a game? Oh, he'll go over <laughs> time and time again, <laughs> believe me. He's got his pulse on everybody on offense. Those are not just the quarterbacks, although that's what a lot of people think. And that one straight left. That was almost a 90-degree angle on that punt. Don't think he planned on that one. So North Carolina, when they pick up a little momentum from this, we will find out on a perfect evening in North Carolina, 14-3. And very many players and kids that have that type of ability. North Carolina's got one here, though. Brandon, take, find ways to get this guy the football. If it means you got to swing him the football on the line of scrimmage, do it. Oh. Butch Davis told us about how he must increase the team's speed, and that was the first thing he looks for when he and his staff go recruiting. Yates almost fell. Here's a deep shot we haven't seen taken. Takes wide open. Well, that was the first big chance North Carolina had today of a shot downfield. They're trying to get Brandon Tate in a double move. T.J. Yates told us earlier this week, Brandon Tate is his best double move runner. He almost stumbles coming out of the center, but collects himself a little pump, and he had Tate wide open in the post. You know what? As a receiver, receivers like to do this, but you can't run with your arms outstretched. It slows you down. You have to run through the ball, and that ball just, just beyond the fingertips of Brandon Tate. Should he have laid out there maybe without a help? Well, he'd like to see that too, obviously, but I think if he just runs through that ball and catches it. A little simpler pass pattern. I'll tell you what, the North Carolina 
Backs and receivers will not go down easily. Greg Little has been all over the field. He's actually been the quarterback in a couple of formations, makes that catch, and Darian Stewart makes the stop. You see what I mean? If you put yourself in third and long situations against the South Carolina defense, they're really tough, tough to convert against. You're not going to get very many opportunities to get these big-time plays downfield against Tyrone Nixon's squad. you got to hit him when you get those chances. So Terrence Brown comes in to punt, and what could have been for the Tar Heels, beautiful kick. And Captain Munnerlyn will just take it inside the 8-yard line, maybe to the 7. We'll see what the final yardage is. Now, we asked you earlier our Affleck trivia question. For last week's win over number 8 Kentucky, Steve Spurrier is 15-0 against UK all-time. Which head coach has the most wins without a loss versus one team? You have a guess? I'm going to say it's a coach in the Big Ten. Yeah, there he is. I knew it was Joe Paterno. But I'm going to be honest with everybody. I would not have said Maryland. He also has a heck of a record, I think, against Temple, I want to say, too. We were going to make you the, but we figured we've abused you enough already. We were going to come up with one with your name in it. <laughs> I appreciate it. We probably a lot of good stuff he does to go get. Just wait. Let's go! The catch made that time by McCorn, who had the touchdown. This time he gets nowhere near the end zone. Jermaine Strong slowed him up, and his mates came over to help. So second down, actually lost a yard on that play. There's so much speed on the North Carolina defense, especially from the defensive line. They got guys that can pursue balls on the perimeter of the football field. They can chase quarterbacks. Ketuan Balmer is a big-time prospect at the next level, and they got a great true freshman playing to Marvin Austin up front. That is Davis at the top of the eye. Only two negative plays out of 20 for the Gamecocks so far. This is not going to be one of them. But a solid tackle that time by Jermaine Strong. If he doesn't make that stop, Jesse, that's a double-digit game. No question. That could have been a big, big play for South Carolina offense. And so far in this football game, we've watched Chris Smelly. There's been a lot of good examples of good plays. Made good decisions. Gets the ball out on time. Although there's also been some ill-advised throws. That ball was just a little bit high. This ball here, though, really could have cost South Carolina. He's got to be very careful. Coach Spurrier gives you a lot of freedom to play quarterback in a system, but you have to take care of the football. It's the most important thing. Well, I would say that's freedom with an asterisk, right? That's right, yeah. Freedom until you throw an intercept. Exactly. Under some heat here. Good idea to give it to Davis, who drops the ball. North Carolina has it. Recovery by Sturdivant. Davis had it knocked out by Mount. South Carolina just throwing a little screen pass here, kind of trying to get out of dodge to get it to Mike Davis. But the true freshman, Juan Sturdivant, able to recover a big fumble. And now look at this great field position. You're going to see right here just a little swing over the middle of the field. Mike Davis loses control of the football. There's a true freshman, Quan Sturdivant. He's made a lot of big plays for this football team, hasn't he? Last week against Miami, blocks a punt, interception. Here he is falling on a big fumble. Give his offense now a chance to go in and score. They have gone between Corey Boyd and Mike Davis, 388 to 387 plays without fumbling the football. Receptions and runs included. Flag comes in on that play. They have gone almost 400 plays since either Boyd or Davis had fumbled a football. Wow. And that goes back. The last fumble came from Boyd against Vanderbilt in October of 2006. So they were so dependable. Now they're in real bad situations. You see, however, the penalty is going to go against the Tar Heels. That's an incredible streak. It was written about in the South Carolina papers, so you know they have to think. Now, we updated it to 387. We'll double-check that. Holding offense number four. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. And it's a luxury to have two running backs that, d that don't fumble. It's a luxury to have really one guy. But when you can have two, you know you can give the football to day in and day out and not put the ball on the ground. That's huge. And who would have expected it? I guarantee nobody on that South Carolina bench would have thought that would have happened right there. No, no chance. In fact, they were just possibly trying to get out of there with maybe a first down, maybe just a couple of more yards to make it easier on the punter. No question. Greg Little now back playing quarterback. Boy, you see his ability just to save this play. 
from being a complete disaster, it is a loss, but it could have been a lot worse. And once again, Eric Norwood, number 40 for the Gamecocks, in there to cause trouble. And what we're finding out with North Carolina right now is that playing Greg Little, a quarterback, isn't going to be a one-play wrinkle. Here you see the snap a little bit high. But give Greg Little a lot of credit just for putting his mitts on that and hauling it back down. That could have been a big-time loss. That would have been two you know, bad plays, a penalty, and all of a sudden a big fumble. And all of a sudden now, you're almost guaranteed getting points going in. And for them to, to continue moving back like that, that would have been bad. Good job by Greg Little just to avoid a bad play. But it's second and 20. Yates under great pressure. Look out. And it is intercepted by South Carolina. Darian Stewart, and there's one I think he's got to eat. Yeah, that's, that's showing his youth right there, and that's showing his inexperience, throwing this football blindly. It was a double screen, and he threw it blind, and Darian Stewart was there to make the interception. Ninth interception against Yates on the year, and South Carolina overcomes their own mistake and gets the ball back for the ball coach top of the Heisman list right now. Justin. I don't know if he's at the top. I'll tell you what, it's been a funny year for this Heisman Trophy. There doesn't seem to be really any clear-cut winner. I think he's definitely in the race. South Carolina getting the ball back. They fumbled it, but North Carolina went backwards and threw an interception. Smelly, first time he's really had to scramble, and boy, he gets swallowed up. He just sort of disappeared that time in the arms of Cam Thomas. You're going to see Norwood right here. Just comes in untouched. He's able to get into T.J. Yates. Eric Norwood's got a lot of speed, but this is just the youth of a young quarterback. You cannot throw balls blind, especially when you're in the opposing team's territory and you have a chance to get points. You would think that Norwood would be accounted for, though, don't you? Yeah, absolutely, you, you do. And it's funny, we talked to Coach John Shoup. He said this week, we got to get our running backs to block Eric Norwood and these guys if we want to have success. On screen plays, though, oftentimes, players come through untouched. Smelly untouched and had plenty of time to get it out to McKinley. Well, speaking of great defensive plays and defensive backs and interceptions, Vince Welch has one of North Carolina's all-time greats with him. Well, that's for sure. A three-time All-American, Dre Bly, now with the uh, Denver Broncos. What's your impression of this atmosphere here today for North Carolina, South Carolina? But you know what? It's, it's, it's what I remember as being a, a former Tar Heel. You know, it's, it's great. The fans are enthused. They get to it and having a good time. And, you know, hopefully we can pull it away today. But it's, it's always glad to, um, always a good feeling to be able to come back home. Yeah, always good to see those guys coming back and supporting the current players. Dave? Yeah, Vince, well, Butch Davis did that at Miami, too. He had a lot of players of those Hurricane teams that he was an assistant coach on with Jimmy Johnson come back when he became the head coach at Miami. And the head ball coach comes about halfway out on the field. He saw something he didn't like and calls a timeout. One thing we've seen when we talk to the coaches in North Carolina defensively, they said there's so many things you have to defend when you play Steve Spurrier. A, you have to stop the run. B, you have to protect against multiple formations. C, you have to defend the shots downfield. But four, the play calling from the sideline is something that everybody's got to be ready for. Well, let's see what he draws up during this little huddle and see if it works. When we return, South Carolina up by 11. As far as the NFL goes, he'd be in the top four or five of anybody who ever walked on the field in that league. He did pretty well, didn't he? Wow. It's like a man in college. <laughs> he was. Third down and short. And North Carolina will force a punt. Solid stop that time for the UNC defense by Charles Brown. That's a loss of two. It's a good job in North Carolina getting pressure. South Carolina had what they wanted. They had a bunch of crossing routes over the middle of the football field. But because they got a push in Smelly's face, he wasn't able to deliver the ball when he wanted. It allowed the defenders of North Carolina to rally around the football and get a big-time stop. Now, one thing we really haven't seen yet for North Carolina, Jesse, although it almost happened with Brandon Tate on the receiving end, is a play, other than that fumble maybe, but a play to get him going here, to get this crowd of Keenan involved. And there's a little bit of a rolling punt. Tate doesn't have a lot of room. He is surrounded and is making some... Oh! Well, he was making something out of that, and he got it from Cody Wells. A facial. Chin music. You saw, I mean, from where we're standing, I saw his head snap back. Oh, man. He got five yards out of that return. He ran about 90. It looked for a second like he might break something here. You're going to see the job. The tight rope on the sideline makes a guy miss. Makes another guy miss. And right now you're just saying, okay, go down. Just go down. <laughs> no, 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 no. That might be oh. 
Two wells in his face. Bam! And Teddy was like, yeah, good hit. Everything's <laughs> fine. Bam. Well, the North Carolina defense is starting to do their job. Anthony Elzey loses a few yards, and we'll head to New York and visit with Matt Weiner. All right, Dave, that hurt back here. Here's our nominee for the Pontiac game-changing performance, Iowa, trying to hang on against Illinois and finally get a Big Ten win. Brett Greenwood, play of the day in the end zone to pick off Eddie McGee and put it away. The Hawkeyes end their eight-game Big Ten conference losing streak. Check out this season's best Pontiac game-changing performances at ESPN.com. Well, I tell you what, you get ranked and you get spanked. It's the way that it's been this year. Plenty of time. And North Carolina with the completion. That's Nix. Another catch for him. Rodney Polk over there very quickly from the strong side linebacker position to make the stop. But what a big difference. All of a sudden, T.J. Yates gets a little time to survey the field. Gets to pick maybe more than one option. He's got a lot of tools, too. I mean, when you look at him play, you, you got to say to yourself, oh, this guy definitely had a great career in high school, probably played four years, probably was an All-American. Here he is in North Carolina. <laughs> the guy really, he played a sophomore year in an option offense, and he split time in high school at Pope High School in Marietta, Georgia, and then really played a senior year in a spread deal. And now here he is. He registered last year, and now he's out here starting for the North Carolina Tar as a junior in high school, he didn't play football. He played basketball and was actually recruited by a lot of schools in the South to play hoops. And down he goes. Another sack. That's the 15th play of zero yards or less against North Carolina today. I think this is an example of what we talked about earlier with his pocket presence. He doesn't have a great feel yet. You're going to see T.J. Yates take the snap and just drop back. And he's got Zach Pinalto, number 17, right over the middle of the field right here, wide open. He's not able to see him, though. His eyes are down, down from downfield, and he can't make the completion. So Captain Munnerlin with the opportunity now to make an exciting punt return. And he is. Got the corner. It's going to be up to the punter, and he slowed him down just in time. Terrence Brown, the punter, saving that one for North Carolina. No flags down, so the Gamecocks are in great field position. We talked all game long about Brandon Tate and his ability to change games, returning punts. South Carolina's got a guy on their side of the ball that can do the same thing. Captain Munnerlin, again, the guy runs a 4-3-5-40. He's fast and he's shifty, and you see it right here in this punt return. What's amazing to me is you look at the way he changes gears, mm -hmm. stop, start, fast, slow, shifty, great hips. Were you talking about the punter or were you talking about Munnerlin? <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about sure. Munnerlin right there. That's double his longest return of the year, by the way. That was a 38-yard return. So it just seemed like the North Carolina defense was starting to establish itself a little bit. Now they're in a real hole here, having only 40 yards to defend. Not a whole lot of time on that clock, and you see South Carolina with just two timeouts. Trying to draw it. And they go to Corey Boyd, and he'll spill across the 40-yard line for a couple of yards. I think one thing that, that's interesting about this North Carolina team, and we've talked about it, is just the youth of this team. Half of their players on scholarship are freshmen. 23 freshmen have played this year. 11 true freshmen have played. And it's not just that freshmen are playing positions. They're playing key skill positions on both sides of the ball. Butch told us yesterday 51 of his 84 players had not played in a game until they started against James Madison. He's smelly looking to... He, he weighed his options. First down or be safe. And he, I think, picked the right one. I think so, too. <laughs> you couldn't get the ball out on time. Just make a play with your feet. Get the ball downfield. Well, near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. He got himself a good situation now, third down and short. All right, let me ask you, what are the odds that the ball coach is dialing up a shot to the end zone? Oh, I'd say they're pretty good. Two tight ends on the field right now. They're getting press man coverage. Would not be surprised. South Carolina has not converted a third down. They go conservative, and looks like they've got the first down with Corey Boyd. So what's interesting about that, too, and we talked about this, Coach Boyer said his O-line has played very average so far, but that's a statement you make to your team right there when you get a, a third and one down it, close to the red zone, and you run the football. Show a lot of confidence and trust in your guys. We'll see if they were able to convert that. Now, who is he unhappy with there at the moment? 
It might be the spot. It might be referees. You never know. Cause you, cause <laughs> it's going to be somebody, isn't <laughs> yeah, There's it? somebody out there who's not happy with. <laughs> it might be the officials, because I thought... It could be the water boy. Oh, look at that. Now, I thought he got it. Now, here's an interesting decision. You see one chain. And that's obviously not the broken one that slowed us down uh, in the first quarter. And he will go for it here. No question. And why not? I mean, here's, this is not a guy who's a conservative coach by any means. No, he goes for the jugular. He's done it his entire career. Why change now? North Carolina shifting to keep up. He's got it, looks like. Smelly, 6'2", 216. Well, I don't know. I it's going to be close. It. It's going to be close. It looked at first like he had gotten the surge. And it'll stop the clock with a minute and four to go. That's well, a load inside yeah. for North Carolina to push against. We talk about guys like Kentuan Balmer and Marvin Austin, big bodies, strong players. That's tough to get a surge against those type guys. And Smelly tries the quarterback sneak up top. We'll get the measurement here and see if he got it. And there's your answer. Yes, he did. You see here the surge by the offensive line. They kind of get stymied at that line. Smelly's head has it. The ball looks like he breaks the plane. You see the, the, the line judge running in to make the spot. And Coach Perrier uh, just looking, looking. Yeah, he knows he's got it. Five First out of ten on fourth downs this season, USC. So, excuse me, South Carolina. I want to get the Trojan fans mad at me. That'll be a little short of the first down, but now they may have to waste a, uh, you should say use a timeout here. And with 45 seconds to go, looks like the clock has been stopped. Coming up on the Cooper Tires Halftime Report, John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie will have all the highlights, including South Florida looking to avoid becoming the fourth team to lose after becoming ranked number five in the AP poll. Well, let's take a look at both these coaches here, head coaches today, Steve Spurrier, of course, and Butch Davis, and what they have done because they've had great success in college. Look at the Steve. I mean, he won a Duke and ACC championship there in 1989, but with the Washington Redskins, it didn't quite work out very well. Butch Davis was a great college assistant and then a great college head coach, great NFL assistant with the Cowboys, but in Cleveland, although he did get to the playoffs once, it didn't quite work out. Now, what do you think the difference is these are obviously successful football coaches and successful men, but what happened in the NFL? Well, I think sometimes your system doesn't necessarily translate over to the next level, and I think you get different guys running the system. Coach Burry really only had a couple seasons in Washington, never really had an opportunity to get that thing going. But blitz packages are different, protections have to be different. There's new things in the passing game you have to account for, and it just didn't work out the way Spurrier would have liked it to in Washington. Smelly has hit his last six passes in 10 of his last 11. Seven in a row. And it's dropped. Let's see if this is ruled incomplete or a fumble. The officials are saying the pass was not controlled and it's incomplete. That's a good job by Chris Smelly. He's doing his job on this play. Takes his steps, looks off the defense, throws the football into the area it needs to be. And Jared Cook has to come up with that catch. You're going to see Chris Smelly here. Look at the eyes. Right down the middle of the football field and just lets it loose. That's what you have to do. He got hit from every direction on the football field. Tremaine Goddard hit him from behind, and Deontay Williams from the side. So here's another big short yarded situation for the Gamecocks. And they'll make it easily with Boyd. Stops the clock with 34 to go. That's a really good push by the South Carolina offensive line. And left guard Seaver Brown and left tacker Jamon Meredith just getting a nice push on that left side allowing Corey Boyd some space. You're going to see these guys right here just get surge off the line of scrimmage, allow a nice lane. That's a big hole. That's nice. I'll tell you what, for third and short, very nice. South Carolina only averaging 131 yards on the ground in a game, and they're doing a decent job so far today moving the football. McKinley there, that pass just overthrown by Smelly, possibly thrown away. Yeah, you know, in South Carolina so far, this game has gone after Jermaine Strong, the right cornerback for North Carolina. Kendrick Williams was a starter. He got hurt, tore his knee against Virginia Tech two weeks ago. We saw Miami last week take advantage of some of these younger and experienced mm -hmm. corners. We've seen McKinley already with a touchdown earlier today. They're still, they're still going after these young guys, trying to make big plays. Ninth play of the drive coming up, set up by that 
fantastic Munnerlyn punt return. Middle of the field is open and it's a touchdown. That is Jared Cook. And for Cook, his first down, first touchdown catch of the season. Well, Jared Cook dropped the exact same play just two plays earlier. Steve Spurrier dials it right back up. Chris Smelly and Jared Cook are able to convert on this. You're going to see right here in the slot, he's just going to run a cover two post. There's a big area in the field. If Chris Smelly can get the ball in, just takes his steps, looks him off, throws in the area. Simple touchdown. Simple, isn't it? Well, it looks simple because even I noticed the big open area in the middle of the end zone. The extra point is good by Suckup. If I can see it, I'm sure somebody who really knows the game and knows how to call a play can see that too. You watch right here, Chris Smelly. Just watch his eyes, looking away. The head's in position, doesn't panic, throws it in the area on time. I'll tell you what, it looks so simple when it's executed properly. It's one of those things where it takes a lot of trust. It's hard for a quarterback to throw blindly into areas, trusting that receivers are going to run into those areas. But when you do it, it works so well. And that's why guys always ask me questions. How do you guys get so wide open all the time? It's because the quarterback and receiver are on the same page, playing the Spurrier system the way the coach wants it operated. It's working very well. For Chris Smelly today, you see his career best third touchdown pass, and we are only, well, we're just about out of the first half. What, what about the psychological devastation for the Tar Heels now? There was a little stretch there where they were clearly holding their own and maybe even gaining ground, and now they take a real body blow. It's tough, and I think, again, you're seeing the youth of that football team. They get a fumble recovery in South Carolina territory, not able to convert on it. They get a penalty, then fumble the ball or throw an interception themselves. I think that's just the youth of a very young North Carolina team. Nine plays, 40 yards, and a minute 41. And they do not want any part of Brandon Tate, and I can't say I blame them. But North Carolina, with all their timeouts, 10 Number seconds, we be curious to see what Butch Davis decides to do. If he just wants to get his offense off the field, Richard Quinn tight end on that return. And actually did a pretty nice job, considering. He did. And I think as long as Connor Barth is on your sidelines, I think you got to keep him in mind. You mean one play timeout and let's go kick it and get three? Well, there's opportunities for quick outs, get the ball to the sideline quickly, whether it's flat routes or quick outs, get the ball out of bounds. Connor Barth told us he likes kicking this direction, and he said the 40-yard line really for him is his limit. I know TJ Yates said we, we say 35. Of course, Connor Barth, the kicker, says, no, no, 40. Well, I can guarantee you he's hovering around uh, his head coach right now. Unless he's doing a couple of quick warm-up kicks in the net beforehand. Disastrous throw that time. That'll end any shot of Connor Barth getting on the field as Emmanuel Cook, who earlier in the season had his appendix taken out and two weeks later came back to play. So that ends any hopes for the Tar Heels to put up some points here with one second to go. Yeah, TJ Yates again showing a little bit of, of the inexperience, just trying to force a play and make something happen. He gets sideswipe sometimes. You see a slot receiver put the hand up, and when you see that as a quarterback, you think, oh, yeah, he's open. I can fit this in. Sure enough. Emmanuel Cook just kind of hovering in the secondary, able to get the big interception. Two interceptions, the last three passes for Yates. So we might see a knee play, although only got 51 yards to the end zone. <laughs> and they decide not to go for it, just pick up a few rushing yards. Quite a few, as it turns out. Hoyt gets uh, 13 on the last play of the first half. So South Carolina gets a late score to put it up 21 to 3. Now stay tuned for the Cooper Tires halftime report with John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie after this. And for North Carolina, the crisis has begun if they're going to hang in this football game, Jesse. Yeah, no question, really. North Carolina has to get back to running the football and holding the football, controlling it. Can't turn the ball over anymore. Very, very well positioned on the kick return. And South Carolina will not have very good field position to start. Well, talked a little bit about the offense, of course, with South Carolina, you have to think of that. But once again, their defense has done a good job. This time, however, they're stopping the run, which is exactly what Butch Davis does not need. Yeah, you know, we really thought coming into this football game, UNC would try to get that running game established. It's been South Carolina, though, that's done a good job stopping it and have done a better job running it themselves on offense. 84 yards rushing for this 11th-ranked running offense in the SEC for South Carolina. 
So South Carolina gets the football in not very good field position at around the 16-yard line. And they'll start to try to grind it out right away with Boyd breaking some tackles before he is finally dragged down, picking up almost nine. Well, Jesse, let us take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. Yeah, you know, I really think this first half has been the story of two young quarterbacks, and Chris Smelly has played so efficiently. You see the numbers, 14 and 19, three touchdown passes, playing within the system. And on the other side of the ball, T.J. Yates has made some ill-advised throws, shown his immaturity at times, forcing balls in South Carolina territory. And Corey Boyd continues to run the ball with great passion for South Carolina. He's picking up the Gamecock first down following a gain of about eight. We take a look at some of the first half numbers and you see anything out there that really jumps out of you besides, of course, the score. Yeah, obviously, there's a score. I think right here, though, you see touchdowns for South Carolina and interceptions for North Carolina, and that has been the biggest story so far. It's been the play of both freshman quarterbacks. Smelly's played well. Yates has not played as well. And I think Smelly has gotten away with a couple of mistakes, Jesse, whereas every mistake the Yates has made, South Carolina has pounced on. Don't forget, Smelly has had two potential interceptions that were dropped by the Tar Heels. Boy, he got belted on that throw, though. That is the first time, I think, today he really has had his nose bloodied. Yeah, it is. E.J. Wilson there doing a great job getting pressure. For the most part today, Smelly has had a nice pocket. Again, the South Carolina offense has done a good job holding up for him. Just from the right-hand side of the screen, there he is, E.J. Wilson in his grill. It's tough for quarterbacks to stay in and make these kind of throws. Gets it right underneath the throwing arm. Good job by E.J. Wilson getting in the backfield. They need a spark right now on defense. Something's got to happen. I think it's got to come from this side of the football for North Carolina. E.J. Wilson, one of those people I talked about, dropped interceptions, had one right in his hands. It might have even been housed for a touchdown. In the shadows. Chance there for North Carolina and just couldn't quite get it to Deontay Williams. Hey, Vince Welch, what about the Tar Heels? I understand we have an injury update? Well, a couple of significant injuries indeed. Uh, Brandon Tate, the outstanding kick returner for the Tar Heels, out with a head injury. He will not play in the second half. And Akeem Nix rolled his left ankle. He's possible, but uh, they're not very optimistic about his status for the second half either. All right, Vince. Yeah, we saw Nix limp off after a catch. Didn't look to be that serious, but it's not my ankle, of course. And there's Tate, and that is a significant loss. Not just on offense, but on special teams. And if they can't, if they lose Hakeem Nix, that's just as big, I think. It makes them almost one-dimensional. Obviously a lot more Greg Little on kick returns now. Plenty of patience that time shown by Smelly. Took the easiest throw available and moved the chains. It's Boyd with a reception. Well, it's really third and long, and all he's trying to do here is just avoid a bad play. Get what you can get. Throw the ball underneath. Get it in the hands of Corey Boyd. Punt the football. Punt is okay. You heard, you know, I, I think the thing Coach Spurrier is going to mention to his young quarterback is just don't try to make every play a big play. If you got to get sacked and throw the ball away, that's okay. Four, five, six. Suck up into punt. He handles all the kicking chores for South Carolina. And with Brandon Tate out of the game, North Carolina turns to Quentin Person, a senior from Greenville, North Carolina, to handle that punt. We'll see what they do on kickoff returns. This is a show that lives up to its name. Wednesdays this fall, America's wealthiest family will be on the loose, and only one man can keep them out of the headlines. You can't be filthy rich without getting a little dirty. Donald Sutherland, Joe Playberg, William Baldwin, and Peter Krause star in Dirty Sexy Money. All new episode Wednesday at 10, 9 central on ABC. All right, what advice would you have for T.J. Yates in this third quarter? Well, I think you, you really you can't press too much. You want to make big plays, but you got to just play inside the system. Make your progressions. Let your playmakers make plays for you. And he'll start with Elzey, who had a bit of a slow first half, only got a couple of yards, and it's funny. The South Carolina run defense was much maligned. Everyone talking about, well, their pass defense is number one in the nation. But on the other hand, everybody's running on them. Well, not so much today. Yeah, really. Coach Nix's defensive group has done a good job fitting on blocks. They're tackling better. They're being more physical at the point of attack, getting in the backfield. It's been a huge difference. It's already a tough team to throw on. But when they can play with this kind of intensity against the run, it makes them so much better. And if you just joined us, Vince Welch reporting that Brandon Tate out for the rest of this game, and Akeem Nix is very questionable with a bad ankle. So two big losses for North Carolina due to injury, and Elsie looked like he had a chance to really bust that one, but Emmanuel Cook stopped him. Sets up third down. You know, it's so important that North Carolina is going to have to be able to run the football. 
right now if they want to get back in this football game. And there's Coach Nix. You see him. Tyrone Nix, defensive coordinator for South Carolina. He's done such an unbelievable job with his unit this year. He coaches these guys up. And, and you know, and they've had some serious injuries. Nathan Pepper's a D-tackle out. They're All-American, hopeful All-American. Jasper Brinkley, middle linebacker, out. They've replaced players, and they play with great intensity. They also lost defensive end Jordan Lindsay to academics. They were counting on him this year, too. Carolina will, looks like they've got that first down. It is. And sliding in to make the catch is Brooks Foster. That's a pickup of six on the play and enough to keep going for the Tar Heels, who you can see the score. It's pretty obvious how desperate this drive is for them, even though it's so early in the third. Yeah, and Brooks Foster is going to have to pick up the slack now. Brandon Tate and Hockey Knicks can't play. He's going to have to start making some plays. I'll tell you what, though, for a young quarterback, it's a lot easier to stay on the field when you can run the ball on first and second down, get positive yards, and keep these third downs manageable. Elsie he really can't find any room to manipulate. Norwood sort of slowed things down. And then finally, Ejibwe makes the stop for South Carolina. Well, you look at these first half drives, half of their first half drives totaled negative 26 yards. Now, we talked to Co uh, offensive coordinator John Shoup about this before the game, and he said, look, we can't get negative plays because this defense in South Carolina, it's tough enough to convert third downs and throw the ball on them. we got to play positively. They haven't done that so far in the first half. LZ averaging barely over two yards per carry on 11 carries. And he'll take a timeout here, leaving North Carolina with two. So I saw something that just didn't jive. And Butch Davis, a defensive coach in most of his background, turning to his offense, trying to get some help going as the Tar Heels try to make something happen at home and get this crowd involved again. And still rally to win the championship. Well, Vince, a big question, and we'll ask here in a moment if Yates can get out of here in one piece, and he just throws it away. Is uh, Who do you like in this race? When you look at the guys that uh, were quick in happy hour yesterday and happy hour conditions last night are going to be very similar to what they face tonight. I think Jimmy Johnson, obviously, you like uh, what he has been able to do five times. He's been a winner at Lowe's Motor Speedway. was very good during happy hour last night. Tony Stewart, Jeff Burton, and if the track and the cars are as loose as they were last night, I like Greg Biffle and Kurt Busch as well. And don't ever count out Jeff Gordon. Yeah. Of course, uh, but he was 33rd in happy hour last night, so they don't have to work on that car a little bit for tonight. I was going to ask you about the 24 car, because I was surprised you left him out of there, but he also had a bad uh, time when they were there in May, too. Meantime, Yates trying to get this thing going, and he's going to be sacked. Too much pressure from that South Carolina front. The boy finally made the sack, but you could probably credit about everybody with a quarter sack if they handed those out in the stat sheets. Yeah, L Lottie Ajaboy, a true freshman defensive tackle for South Carolina, had an unbelievable series right there. There was three plays he found himself in the backfield, really making his presence known. We talk about a lot of the freshmen playing for North Carolina, but Lottie Ajaboy had a great series right there. Second sack of the year for him, nearly blocked. The punter is taken down, and so there's a flag. Munnerlin has had one spectacular punt return. He's not going to get another one. But let's see if this is going to be a personal foul call or not. And there is another flag on the field at the other end, right where Munnerlin was brought down. And there's a visor list, Steve Spurrier. We haven't seen that yet today. So head ball coach is angry at somebody. 52 yards on that punt, nothing on the return. Southeastern Conference crew, Matt Austin is the referee. That's one. predictable response from this crowd now he did not have his microphone on there's nothing wrong with it here's the explanation we had two fouls on the play personal foul roughing the kicker 84 of the defense after the play dead ball personal foul on the kicking team it'll be North Carolina's ball first down Wow. Yeah, that was not offsetting penalties because one happened after the play. 
Well, you see Jared Cook here at second from the bottom of the screen. He's a tight end. This is him right here. He caught a touchdown earlier. Makes a bad play here. Goes for the block. His shoulder just makes contact with the punter. Now, Connor Barth told us, uh, excuse me, not Connor Barth, he's the kicker, but Brown, I don't know if he studies uh, drama at North Carolina. They do have a good theater program here. Or that acting. Was a bit dramatic, <laughs> I thought. I was thinking of Barth for a second because he's a communication major. We tried to talk about it getting into the broadcast business. They normally are. But, yeah, exactly. But that time, I don't know. I've seen worse, obviously. But that was a nice little dive there. And uh, let's take a look at the other penalty. While we were paying attention to whether what kind of roughing or running into penalty. And that's a big safety issue, Jesse. I've seen that call made before at other games when the play is pretty much dead. Belting a guy when he can't see you. Yeah. I don't know if that was really necessary. I agree with that call. I agree with that call, no question. The player is defenseless, and it's easy to get injured and hurt in those types of instances. So after all of that, North Carolina lines up with the football and, and new downs. And they try Johnny White this time. And there's another flag down. You can read his lips. Won't back him up, so this is going to go against UNC. Holding. Offense number 72. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. You know, it's so hard to get a spark going on offense when you keep penalizing yourself like that. And really, here's 72 right here on the outside. He's going to get the hold. The Johnny White runs to the left. He's grabbing Jersey, and you see the line judge throw the flag. That's an easy penalty. They're looking for a spark right now. Two of their biggest playmakers at wide receiver are not in the game. They need to do something to get this thing going, and that's not a good start. Yeah, they're missing Brandon Tate and Akeem Nix. Tate was injured on that violent hit he took on the punt return in the second quarter. And Nix with an ankle problem. He split the H back way out. And Yates gets across the 20-yard line, making up a little of the penalty yardage. Eight penalties ties a North Carolina season high, and that's not a stat that Butch Davis will celebrate after this game. No, they haven't played very disciplined. And when I'm watching T.J. Yates in this football game right now, he looks uncomfortable when he's throwing from the pocket. He goes through his first progression, and as soon as he feels any pressure, his vision level comes down. You see him start scrambling. As he gets better and he gets more experience, he'll learn to keep that vision downfield more. Yates has only had two completions over 10 yards. And that is nearly a disastrous, and not that there ever is a good one, of course, but Ryan Brown almost had himself a chance to pick off that slant. Yeah, Ryan Brown really here just watches the eyes of T.J. Yates, and T.J. Yates' eyes takes him right to where he's throwing the football. He's trying to get a quick three-step completion out to his right-hand side. And just kind of telegraphs the ball without checking the area first. That could have been another costly interception for South Carolina. Would have been Yates' third on the game. It seems to me, Jesse, one of the things is North Carolina has had three chances in this game to really hurt South Carolina with turnovers, and they haven't made those plays. And there's a mistake that Yates got away with, but it seems like when he makes a mistake, South Carolina takes complete advantage. He won't get the first down there either. He just makes it a little bit easier for his punter, Terrence Brown. Eric Norwood, the National Defensive Player of the Year, in on the stop of the Gamecocks. So despite the penalties, and you also have to wonder, in a classic what if, what if you don't have that personal foul penalty on the punt? You're talking about having much better field position and a whole different set of plays. Oh, yeah, no question. I, I think good teams know how to capitalize on other teams' mistakes. We just haven't seen that today from a young North Carolina team. See if they dial up a heavy rush. They don't, and they give Brown a chance to lay a little lumber on this kick. Gets a great block, but good coverage that time by the Tar Heel special teams following a 50-yard punt. Now, what is going on there? It's been a wild year for college football, hasn't it? Hey, South Carolina hangs around long enough. That number seven ranking could go up. 
And they've got to finish business here at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. And Mike Davis, both he and Corey Boyd have run the ball really well. They're almost the same size. Davis, a couple of inches shorter. They're about the same weight, about the same style of runner. They, they do everything the same almost. The only difference really was when Coach Spurrier said he likes to get Corey Boyd involved passing the football, and he likes Mike Davis more in the red zone. Aside from that, they're twins. And that South Carolina line doing a pretty good job moving bodies, although not that time. You see Darrell Mapp, 48 in on there and also Kentwan Balmer. Boy, talk about somebody big. They list him at 6'5". He seemed taller and 295. He's a special player too, Kentwan Balmer. He's a guy that beats double teams, demands a double team every single snap. He's got an array of pass rushing moves. He's a leader on that team. He's, he's an elected season-long team captain. That goes and tells you a lot about his type of character. His favorite players growing up are Reggie White and Lawrence Taylor. Defensive mind all the way. And there's a fumble if then may rule him down, but it's also probably not a first down. It doesn't look like it's going to be. Obviously, we will all take a look at that several times, I'm sure. But it looked to me, first view, that he was down. I thought he was down as well. It looks like his elbow touches down before the ball goes loose. Butch Davis irate on the sidelines. We'll take a look at it again. Mike Davis makes a nice shake. It's tripped up. Elbow down. Ball comes out. He's down. But not enough for the first down. They're going to have to punt. Kendrick Bernie making that stop and knocking the ball loose. He's a baseball player also on the outstanding Tar Heel baseball program that year that often makes visits to Omaha in the College World Series. You see the officials got that call right. And that's Person again back deep replacing Tate. Got a little room there. I think if he had kept going to the corner, it might have been interesting. But what do I know about punt returns, having never returned one in my life? 46-yard kick. Well, we have talked about what this season has been like. Anybody who's a college football fan knows these are the ESPNU All-State standings. Now, LSU's in a fight with Kentucky. Ohio State had their game today. Boston College, maybe with a Heisman uh, candidate and Ryan, the quarterback up there. South Florida, how about that in the war on I-4? 64 to 12. Hi, George O'Leary. We're at the University of South Florida. That is an embarrassment. That's something the ball coach it's would do. Bit, it's <laughs> a bit of a statement game, isn't it? Especially after last week, they fell asleep a little bit against FAU. Everyone wondered, do they deserve to be in the top five? We found out today, UCF not a bad team. No. And they showed up big time. Ask Mac Brown about UCF, who opened up UCF Stadium and Texas nearly lost there. So now if you're Yates, You've lost so many weapons. Obviously, Brooks Foster, I guess, becomes your guy. Also, you've got to count guys like Bobby Rome, Anthony Elsie. I mean, everybody now is you've lost Knicks and you've lost Tate. These are guys who are going to have to play now as they never have before. Yeah, they're playmakers, and now guys have to step up. The problem is it's young players who don't have a lot of experience, and now they're going against the best pass defense in college football. Not even 127 yards per game. And they go for power that time with Ryan Houston, the freshman from Matthews, North Carolina. Well, Brandon Tate on a spectacular punt return. Here's how he got hurt. Just a hit by Cody Wells right there. Hit him like almost right in the earpiece, it seemed. And you and I mentioned it. As soon as Brandon Tate got up, kind of pat him on, on yeah. the shoulder, said, hey, nice hit. Jogged off the field, made nothing of it. And all of a sudden now, not in the game. You wonder if that hit had lingering effects. What a shot he took, though. Pretty big play for the Tar Heels. They're going to have a chance in this game. They have stalled the Gamecocks offense in this quarter. And they'll get a first down and a little bit more. And instead of going with Elsie, they continue with the power back, Houston there, the freshman, and he gains a 10 there for the first down. Well, it's not as though Anthony Elsie isn't too big of a load himself. Now you give the football to Ryan Houston, another freshman who weighs 250 pounds. It's like a little Jerome Bettis running at you. You see the stiff arm, the upper body strength. A little Jerome Bettis? <laughs> oh, man, if, if there is such a thing. <laughs> Oxymoron. Keep it on the ground with the big back rumble for a couple of yards. I'll tell you what's interesting, too. We talked about the youth of this offense, but all four of the UNC running backs going into this season, none of them had a carry right. coming into this year, whether it was Anthony Elzey, Johnny White, Ryan Houston, 
Richie Rich. None of these guys had a carry coming in. You talk about skill guys having to play the key positions on a football team. North Carolina's had to find that out this year so far. The Tar Heels managing to sustain a bit of a drive here. In addition to Brandon Tate, you saw his injury. Hakeem Nix is questionable with a bad ankle. That'll bring up third down. And now you see on the South Carolina sideline, Vince, an update? Darian Stewart starting free safety for the Gamecocks was injured on that uh, last punt coverage situation and uh, is over on the sideline having his left knee wrapped. Uh, let me check that. It's his right knee. So they're putting a wrap on his right knee. So Darian Stewart at this point, uh, just from observation perspective, looks like he might not uh, be back this afternoon. All right, North Carolina, 3 out of 11 on third down. Well, Yates just looks like he's in a maze, and there's nobody over there. South Carolina sideline might be calling for an intentional grounding, but he was under a great amount of pressure that time. Clifton gathers on that. Here's Eric Norwood. He's been pretty quiet all day today. You haven't heard too much, but one thing Coach Tyrone Nix talks about, he plays with one speed and one speed only. The guy's got an unbelievable motor. You see it right there. Just trying to disrupt the quarterback. He's been doing it all game long. So North Carolina, frustrating. Their defense is doing all right, but it's their offense that's not helping. And the fair catch made by Munderlin. 35-yard punt. South Carolina has the football. For the moment, they have control of this football game in Chapel Hill. I'm a terrible dancer. I need some help. Well, <clears throat> I'm not sure he's the guy you want to go to. That was Roy Williams, of course. And ESPN, you're home for hundreds of college basketball games, and I'm sure a few involving both of these schools. And once again, it's Corey Boyd. So Steve Spurrier going with his tailbacks, both Boyd and Davis. We mentioned Midnight Madness opening all over, and of course, we're in North Carolina. You have to talk about basketball for a moment. Coverage begins November the 11th on our family of networks and over 400 games on ESPN, ESPN2, and of course, ABC. And there is Roy Williams. He's won a couple games, hasn't he? Yeah, he's, he's done all right for himself. I think he has. <laughs> so was the guy they named the Dome after here, too. He did pretty well, too. He was okay. An okay legacy here in terms of college basketball. <laughs> and okay Butch players Davis, also. Butch Davis is trying to match that in football. Won a couple of games, a big win over his former team Miami last week, but at the moment, someone he's only met once. That's the odd thing about that, because Florida and Miami almost never play college football, a source of great controversy among the fans of both schools. And now you're taking a look. For South Carolina, you saw Isaac, Brandon Isaac, the safety, coming off the field, and he's headed to the locker room here. But a source of uh, consternation between the two, two schools, Spurrier and Davis have only met once in college football in a moment. I played in that game. I remember. How'd that turn out? Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> and once again, the North Carolina defense is doing its job. You saw Kentwan Balmer wrestling down the ball carrier. Darrell Mapp also in there, and he is the leading tackler on this team. In fact, one of the best in the ACC and in the NCAA. And there's the official with the raised fist. It's fourth down. <laughs> <laughs> Seen that once or twice. <laughs> not about you, though. No, no. That was always Grossman, wasn't it? This time it's not about me. I think it's about the offensive line not being able to get a push. You just need a first down. They need one yard. They're not getting it. You see him here talking to, to Chris Smell. You wonder maybe if he got the run check wrong at the line of scrimmage. So once again, South Carolina is going to score this corner. What opportunity? How did he not block that? I have no idea how that punt made it out of there. That is Bruce Carter, the freshman, 40-yard punt. I don't know how that punt did not get blocked. That ball looked like it grazed the side of his helmet as Bruce Carter comes in. Watch this. Right up the middle. Oh, man. Just right by his ear hole. I'm amazed at that. You saw it. I thought for sure that ball was going to get blocked. He came in untouched. There was a mistake somewhere up on the offensive line. Right up the middle. Oh, man, inexcusable. 
Yeah, not that's able to get a block. And that's the kind of play that can spark a turnaround. And they've had, North Carolina has had so many other chances, dropped interceptions, two of them. That opportunity right there. It's just not working for them. They go out for a first down in the Gamecock territory with Bobby Rome on the catch. And now, let's go visit with Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Dave, here's our nominee for the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week. South Florida's Matt Grothy had a huge day against Central Florida, 312 yards of total offense, four touchdowns as the Bulls hung 64 on UCF. They've won eight in a row. Text vote to 87654 on your AT&T wireless phone to cast your vote. All right, Matt, that was T.J. Yates' longest pass play of the late afternoon. Now with a little bit of confidence, that was a sharp throw, and Nix is back in the game with the bad ankle, you'd never know it. He was ruled questionable, and you saw him get a little dicey as he got over there by the hedges, but that is 22 yards, the new longest pass play of the game, and all of a sudden the Tar Heels got a little mo going. Well, North Carolina needs their playmakers to be on the field. You're going to see it's just a simple hitch route, more like an option route for Hakeem Nix. He's able to make a guy miss right off the bat. Marvin Sapp, not even not able to wrap him in. You see right here, just a little shoulder move, turn around, and get upfield. That's one thing Hakeem Nix does a great job of. They need him to stay healthy and stay on the field. It looked like the play that Brandon Tate broke against Miami for about 50 yards a week ago. Same type of pattern, almost the same type of result. They go back onto the ground, and now it looks like they're going with Houston as the tailback position. Is LZ getting a break on the bench? Butch Davis hoping to get this one thing that's been missing here. We had a lot of atmosphere at the start of the game, but... Home team's down 18. They haven't scored this quarter. It's not much going on with this crowd. Right. Well, it, you know, they want to get it back involved. I like the play calling right now. It's not too late for this team to stop stop running the football. they got to keep running the ball right now. If you can get a score here, go into the fourth quarter, down 11 points, two possessions, that plays right into their hands. But they got to come away with points here. And they've had chances at one missed field goal today already by Connor Barth, who's one out of two. That didn't look right. That'll be a sack for the South Carolina defense. Loss of two. Well, North Carolina trying to get T.J. Yates on the move. Personally, watching tape, I think he throws better on the run. They're just trying to get him outside, change the pocket right now. That will be the end of the third quarter. Scoreless, but North Carolina is in great position. They're always... Perfect, perfect day in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Weather-wise, not at all a factor. Kickoff 73 degree temperatures a few hours ago. And as the sun sets here at Keenan Stadium, North Carolina trying to get going on offense again in the end zone for the first time. Chance here for touchdown, North Carolina. That's Little. And he's been a big factor in this game. the running ability of Greg Little after he catches this pass. We've seen it so far this game, running the football out of the backfield, lining up a quarterback. He cut that ball all the way across the grain. I think he was suspended in there for like, it felt like three seconds there. I was shocked that he made it that far. He dove about nine feet, it looked like to me, from about the three-yard line. Little's first touchdown in college. And oh boy, fire drill here. That didn't work out very well at all for the Tar Heels. And Ryan Balcom is the holder there in that situation. He is the unusual that you don't have a quarterback or a punter, somebody who handles the ball frequently is the holder. You'll see Greg Little here in the slot. He's just going to run a little flat swing route. He gets the ball early and he's able to cut the ball all the way across the grain. TJ Yates just gets the ball out to him and he just does the rest. Look at this. Makes Casper Brinkley miss and dives from like the five yard line <laughs> against that thing. How do you do that? I don't know, look at this. This is a great angle. And look, also he made the Gamecocks look slow there and they're fast. Man, he might be in the wrong sport. He needs to be playing, he needs to be on track in the long jump. You see TJ Yates just looking for a spark. That's his 10th touchdown pass of the season and his first, he didn't have any in the last three games. So his first in a while. And that is the spark the Tar Heels needed. Now it's going to be up to their defense. Their defense certainly performed well in the third quarter. I think one thing that would be interesting now, we were just talking about this at break, was 
How does Coach Spurrier now call the game plan offensively? He looked like he was playing real close to the vest in that third quarter, running the football a lot, but now all of a sudden the score starts tightening down. It's only a two-possession game now. You may have to start opening it up a little bit more if you're South Carolina. Yeah, I was surprised at the play calling. He was very conservative. A lot of run plays, not one deep pass. Really, did, almost as if we forgot Chris Melly was playing quarterback in that third quarter. Yeah, especially after the way he started this game. He was on five in that first half. This is Chris Culliver. And a pretty good return of over 20 yards for Chris Culliver. Now we'll see exactly what happens. And for South Carolina. Now time for our best buy playbook. Really, and Chris Smelly has done a nice job in the first half of this game, using his eyes, throwing on time, delivering the ball into the areas his wide receivers would be. The plays were drawn up by Spurrier, and Smelly did a nice job executing. He was 13 to 17 in that first half, threw three touchdowns, which is already a career high for him. That was a very efficient half of football, and they haven't been throwing the football very much in that third quarter. I think they may have to open it up a little bit more now in the fourth. Three, two passes in that quarter. He's going to try to start with one here. And he will not. Great pressure by Massenburg first, and then Balmer, and then Wilson. Actually, correct that. That was Cam Thomas who first broke in 93, not 98. Yeah, Cam Thomas gets a great push. It takes everything Chris Smelly has just to avoid this with a little spin move and does the smart thing. Don't throw the ball blind away. Just try to get forward. Limit the loss. South Carolina in the second half, they've only had 12 plays for 36 yards. Great coverage that time. Clean play by Tremaine Goddard. Well, this feels like a different stadium suddenly. The touchdown and now two big defensive plays, but it's still third down. It does. Well, North Carolina has come out and played outstanding defense all half long so far. Tremaine Goddard does a good job making a jump on this football. Chris Nelly had the, he had the look he wanted, coverage-wise. That was just a better play by Tremaine Goddard breaking that pass up. Smelly first start on the road since he took over from Blake Mitchell. And it's loud all of a sudden in there, isn't it? Louder since pregame that I can remember. Absolutely. All of a sudden, the fans now in this game, North Carolina bench waving at everybody. They want more noise. Almost delay a game. In fact, it may be. Right in the snap, delay of game, offense. You can give that one to the crowd. Yeah. Young quarterback, hasn't played on the road yet. It's loud. He's trying to communicate. They get the hand signals in from Coach Spurrier, but there are a lot of checks that have to be done at the line of scrimmage as well. And it's tough in these types of environments. You see what the North Carolina defense has done in this half. They've been tremendous. Pressure from the outside, and from behind, you can see that coming with Hiley Taylor. Loss of six, and the loss of the ball for the Gamecocks. Tell you what, this defensive line from North Carolina really has taken over this football game in the second half. They've just been dominant on their side of the ball. You see Hiley Taylor here come at the bottom of your screen and just keeps pushing. Smelly's got to get rid of that football. He's got to check it down or move it forward. Holly Taylor makes him pay for it. Suck it in the punt. It's a good one. Driving person back. And very nice coverage that time by the Gamecocks following the 46-yard punt. Chris Hall on the stop. Now, can the Tar Heels maintain this momentum? South Carolina's defense will be tested when we return. Enthusiasm, newfound enthusiasm in the stadium here. You see the score, North Carolina. One other thing we should point out, North Carolina has, has had some special teams woes today. Missed three points on a field goal, and they botched the extra point on the touchdown. Now, earlier we showed you Brandon Isaac leaving the field. He was not hurt. He had blood on his jersey, and who knows in football whose blood that was. <laughs> so he's now wearing number 13. So if mom and dad or friends happen to be watching, he's fine. On the other hand, T.J. Yates not feeling very fine as he's wiped out 
by Lottie Adjiboy. Boy, Adjiboy has really come on in this in this half. Yeah, he sure has. He's had a great half just rushing the passer. Comes on untouched. True Ow. freshman just hit himself. Wow, a present. How did that happen like that? That was so easy. That looked like they let him. Of course, they didn't, but that's what it looked like. Well, they were trying to throw a bubble screen out to the right-hand side when that got broken down. There was no one backside to seal him off. A little more protection this time. Nick's back in the game after that ankle injury sidelined him for most of the third quarter. The officials have had about enough of that. He picked up the sack yardage. Not much more after that. Sets up a big third down and ten. A lot of the passing game for North Carolina today has been really kind of in the short to intermediate zone. They've only really had one big chance in this game to go deep. They had a double move opportunity early to Brandon Tate. He didn't hit it. So they're running the football now and just trying to throw everything underneath. It's hard to gain big chunks of yardage that way, though. But they got to find ways to stay on the field. They did a good job last drive. You see what North Carolina has done on third down against an excellent third down defense. Fires it, not to the marker. It is caught, but it will be short. Foster on the grab. And Chris Hampton, safety for South Carolina, did a nice job knowing where the first down marker was, keeping his defender in front of him so he could make the tackle and ensure them not converting a first down. I don't see a punter coming on the field here, Jesse. Oh, you know what? And I really... Tell you what, this is a tough call because your defense is playing so well right now. This is such a gamble. You don't want to give Steve Spur and his offense the ball back in your own end. But again, you're just trying to find things to spark your team. Fourth and two. I don't know if he got... No, the flag is down. Now let's see which came first because we do have a flag for the delay of game. Timeout, North Carolina. The first time out of the half. All right, so there you go. They are not punished for the delay of game. Now, that's something I, I, I go to. I'm a little bit confused as to why North Carolina never snapped the ball there. I'm not sure if they tried to fake it or not, but we'll see what they come up with. What's the decision going to be? Will it be punt, or will they go for it? We'll all find out together. Tell Jesse will be available for photos and autographs after the game right over around in here someplace, up there in the corner, I think. All right, here we go, fourth and two, and they are lined up to go for it after the timeout. Has a chance, has the first down. Went to next, the money receiver with Tate out of the game. That looked like a Steve Spurrier play. It sure did. What a play call and a lot of confidence in TJ Yates. The biggest pass play of the day, he's able to convert on. That was his nicest throw on the biggest down so far this game. I think everybody in this building, including myself, expected run. There's a 250-pound running back in the backfield. They play action, and they get their best receiver, Hakeem Nix, one-on-one -on -one with Captain Munnerlin. He's able to run a corner route, get the first down. And you can see Nix pull up just a little bit there. He is playing on a bad ankle, and he clearly favored that a little bit. And that was a dynamite throw. I mean, he was open, of course. You kind of expected him to make the throw. But at times, Yates, it looked like he had struggled with his confidence. Now, your guess is as good as mine as to what this huddle could be about. Please reset the game pack to 11 minutes and 2 seconds. 11-0-2. And so they will do that. All right, so we know Steve Spurrier is the reputation as a gambler, and well-deserved, and then there's a gambler right there. And that wasn't just a gamble. That was like <laughs> going all in right there. Yeah, that might have been the ball game. <laughs> two, two bad things can happen out of three possibilities every time you throw the football. That was a huge call. And they stick with a big back, Houston. And he'll just move the pile a little bit. Well, let's get a NASCAR update on the big race tonight. We'll go to Brent Musburger. Brent. The battle for the NASCAR Nextel Cup moves to Charlotte for a prime time battle tonight. Teammates Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson lead the chase. It's coming up right after football on ABC, the Bank of America 500. Second down and eight. It'll be a fascinating race as they get closer to wrapping that thing up at Homestead in November. Pressure coming from Marlin from the corner. Yates can't escape all of it. Oh, he did. I'm amazed he got that throw off. It was nearly a foolish throw, nearly intercepted, but boy, Munderland came in off the corner off of a blitz, and that seemed to ignite the Gamecock defense there. Munderland was there. Casper Brinkley was there. 
The South Carolina defensive line, while they might be a little bit undersized, these guys get after you now. Watch Casper Brinkley just come through the middle like that. Great athleticism by TJ Yates, try to avoid all that. But man, there's a lot of speed up front for the South Carolina defense. Now Marquis Hall got his hands on the quarterback there, but couldn't quite bring him down. The Tar Heels four out of 14 on third down. I would think if they don't make it here, might as well go for it again. They've had some problems in the kicking game today, the Tar Heels have, with a missed extra point. They didn't get off the ground, really, and a missed field goal. What a fine catch. Wow. Hakeem Nix. Ten yards. He's earned the right to talk a little bit about after that catch. And that really was an outstanding throw by T.J. Yates. He throws this to the back shoulder of Hakeem Nix. This is tough to do. He's just going to run a little stop route and try to big body the shorter cornerback. And Captain Munderlin, that's a tough throw for the quarterback, really. He's aiming for the eight on, the, on his left shoulder, on his outside. What a one-hand grab. And that was really one of the only times today we've seen T.J. Yates with time in the pocket. Seven catches, 92 yards for Nix. Little going in motion. Watch for him. He has the touchdown catch. This is Daly. He used to be a quarterback looking for Little. Intercepted by Cook. And down the sidelines. I don't think he was out of bounds or was he? The officials are saying he was out of bounds back at the 37-yard line. Well, they gambled again, but you know how it works for gamblers sometimes, Jesse. I'll tell you what, they went with the trickeration. This is the second time on the drive. They try a reverse pass to last year's quarterback, Joe Daly, and he overthrows Greg Little on this. You're going to see the fake handoff. Here's Joe Daly now with the ball. Just tries to give his receiver a chance. Overthrows Greg Little. Great play by Emmanuel Cook. He leads this team in tackles. And I swear to God, the guy is all over the field all the time. <laughs> he seems like he's always around the football. And you could just feel the air suck out of here. Oh, you no question about that. Third interception against the Tar Heels today. And Smelly now trying to break a big one with McKinley. McKinley made a nice catch on that pass. That pass really came out of Smelly's hands hot. It's a gain of 17, and all of a sudden, the advantage here, boy, a score by the Gamecocks of any kind, three or six or seven, and it's going to be a tough time for North Carolina. No question. It's funny, you know, in college football, you talk about momentum and how critical it is. There's so many young guys on the field and how they feed off of that kind of stuff, and right now, all of a sudden, it just feels like all the momentum is right back with South Carolina. Not a bad idea to grind it out just a little bit and pick up a yard there. Thomas in on the stop for North Carolina. Time permitting, by the way, we want you to stay tuned for the Dell postgame report with John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. He's a big hero in Canada, isn't he, Flutie? Doug Flutie? Yeah. He's a legend. I used, to, I used to watch that guy growing up throw the ball over the yard. Make sure CFL. you tell him that next time you see him. He'll feel great for that, won't he? Yeah. I remember you when I was a kid, Doug. Got your autograph four times. You don't remember. <laughs> Notice a deliberate pace now being set by the Gamecocks offense. Folks in North Carolina know that is the four corners. What an interception! Turned around by Pascal. And it's not over yet for the Tar Heels. That's Mark Pascal, the junior from Charlotte, his first interception. Mark Pascal just watches the eyes and watches the head of Chris Smelly. Follows him all the way to the football. They're just trying to throw a curl route. You're going to see his eyes as he drops back. Chris Smelly looking over, eyeballing the receiver. And takes the linebacker right to the throw. And Pascal makes a beautiful one-hand grab. Who do you think he was throwing to there? Well, he was trying to throw a curl route to his wide receiver. It well, was McKinley. Point. Yeah. And Pascal just read the eyes and took him right to the football. Boy, we've seen some great catches by these North Carolina players on offense and defense. And all of a sudden, it's your serve, Tar Heels. And they go to White. His best run of the day. And just like that, momentum now back with North Carolina again. Johnny White started the first five games for North Carolina at running back, and he gets his most productive run of the game right here. A simple zone stretch play to the left, reads his block, and they gashed him on this. 23 yards, the longest running play of the day for the Tar Heels. <laughs> 
Three points won't help them here. That boy, that missed extra point's going to weigh on them, isn't it? White again picked up about five. Rodney Paul get on the stop. Have not seen much of Anthony Elzey in this half. We're finding out. We're going to investigate whether he is injured or maybe just being held out by a coach's decision. But if there's one thing the Tar Heels are deep in, it's tailback. They got a lot of tailbacks. Not a lot of experience at tailback, but they got a bunch. And that zone stretch play we've seen these last two plays now have really paid dividends for this North Carolina team. Southgate, both these teams have made some big mistakes in the fourth quarter. White again. First down. All right down to the 11-yard line. That Jonathan Williams on the stop. And that's the same running play now. We've seen three plays in a row. They've run it left, right, and left again. It's a simple zone stretch play. The running back, Johnny White, is forced to be patient. Just find his lane, find his seam, and get your shoulders north and start going north-south. He does that there. Another impressive drive running the football here by North Carolina. Off of the interception by Pascal. Ahead. Very simple play that time. Nothing much doing there. Well, tonight, a full day of college football and ESPN will conclude at 7.45 Eastern when Auburn looks to exact revenge for last year's loss to Heisman hopeful Derek McFadden. And the Arkansas Razorbacks as both teams need a win to keep pace with LSU and the SEC West. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN. This tonight at 7.45 Eastern. College football lives here. North Carolina actually has the advantage in total yards now. They're approaching 300. South Carolina at 272. Little trick play again using Little. He's had one touchdown, but they're waiting for him this time. And they dropped the ball. The ball was ripped out of there by Darian Stewart, who has an interception already today. But it looked like the Tar Heels and Little got the ball back. Uh, Greg Little's been so dangerous in so many instances in this game so far for North Carolina. They give him the flip reverse, tries to stay in bounds to get the extra yards, but you got to wrap that football up. Good job by Darian Stewart tugging it out, and almost another big mistake for this young North Carolina team. And you saw 40 Norwood, and they're pulling on Little the other direction, trying to get him. Let's get an update from Vince on what's going on with Anthony Elsey. Well, the good news for North Carolina fans is that there's nothing physically wrong with Anthony Elsey. They have just uh, stuck with the hot hand so far, and that's not Elsey. So nothing wrong with him physically, so he could uh, be seen here in the uh, final six minutes of this game. All right, Vince, thanks. Melvin Ingram limped off the field for South Carolina, so the number six is not having a good half. Look out, Yates hit on the throw and a great effort there but obviously that was never going to be complete that's really interesting uh you know what he was just saying regarding they go with the hot hand to running back and we've seen that this year so far johnny white's the starter five games in all of a sudden virginia tech they're down anthony elsey comes in the fourth quarter runs for 74 yards and all of a sudden now he's the starter has a good game last week against miami comes into this game the starter but we've seen johnny white and ryan houston so far play play well when given their opportunities now at the end of the game they're the ones playing now what about this decision here down by a dozen. 27-yard field goal for Bart. Their third and final timeout of the half. Well, how about that? North Carolina empties their pockets of timeouts with 6.05 to go. So we will find out if Butch Davis is going to stick with the attempt at three-pointer, one of the nation's best kickers, when we return from Chapel Hill. Really, you look at these numbers. And really, in the second half for North Carolina, they have outgained South Carolina. They're playing better. You got more total yards now. You see the number here in the second half, second half yards. That's pretty That's pretty severe. <laughs> but in the end, turnovers always kill you. And yeah. they had too many in the first half. They are going for it. They, Connor Barth, the field goal kicker, has his helmet off. I'm Dave Lott with Jesse Palmer upstairs. Vince Welts on the sidelines. The ball game may ride on this play. The field goal really wouldn't have done North Carolina any good. Looking all the way for the end zone, the fade and low! Oh, it looked like a good throw too, Jesse. He just couldn't get it. You know what, that was a really good play call. They try to throw the fade from the inside slot and give Greg Little a chance to go get the football. It looks to me like this is a pretty good throw by TJ Yates. You see Little here. He just runs the fade right to the corner. Oh, it looks like he just lost the ball. Looks like that was gonna land right into his lap. And he just misjudged the flight of the ball right there and just missed it. 
Mike West is in coverage there. I don't know if you can throw the ball any better. You're the expert. I'm not. No, that was a great ball. And you can see right here, Butch Davis thought that was a touchdown. Just telling this guy, just catch it. T.J. Yates knows it as well. Boy, this game does not go the Tar Heels' way. All the missed chances they have had to hurt South Carolina. They've held them scoreless in this half. That doesn't happen to Steve Spurrier's teams of any kind. I don't think the USFL, he didn't get held scoreless for a half very often. No, and it goes back, and I think if you ask Butch Davis after the game, he'd say, you know what, our inexperience yeah. and our youth hurt us today because our guys didn't know how to finish and make plays if they lose this football game. Still a lot of time left, and the way their defense is playing right now, anything can happen. By the way, don't forget, we've got some NASCAR coming up here very shortly. The state of North Carolina excited about that. That's in Charlotte. We're in Chapel Hill. And they're very excited about this football game, too, as are the South Carolinians. Their seventh-ranked team trying to hold on, trying not to be one of those top ten teams that has had trouble this year. And they've had some trouble in this half, particularly. Well, Vince D. Springer has not been in the stadium in a long time, but he's done pretty well here, hasn't he? Yeah, you have to go back to 1989, the last time he coached a team here at Keenan Stadium. That was his Duke Blue Devils, and they won 41 to nothing. Carried Coach Spurrier off the field afterwards as they clinched the ACC championship. And a lot of fans here at North Carolina won't ever forget it because Duke came back out on the field and took a team photo in front of the scoreboard that night. And uh, in typical Spurrier fashion, he told us earlier this week, we appreciate those North Carolina people leaving the lights on the scoreboard for us. Steve Spurrier's memory is unbelievable. That guy doesn't forget anything. He remembers how many yards they had offensively, how many turnovers they got defensively in that game. Wow. Third down and eight, and that's not going to work at all. So South Carolina will have to punt. Now, here's an interesting question, Jesse. If you're North Carolina, do you call for an all-out block here, or do you just try to set up a decent return? Uh, I would just set up for the return. I think you're going to get the football back midfield anyway. I'll tell you what, though, with South Carolina running the football and milking the clock now, with North Carolina unable to capitalize on a touchdown opportunity the previous possession, they're looking at getting the ball back here with under, under four minutes. Low snap. Suck up. Not a decent kickoff, though, and the Tar Heels will have to start in there. That's going to get a nice roll and die at the 38-yard line. So 348 left. The Tar Heels need two scores. North Carolina gets the ball back, but not a whole lot of time to get two scores out. Well, this is college football presented by Best Buy, by the way. Now, Steve Spurrier, they love him if he's on your side, but boy, there's a laundry list of places in the South where they just don't like the guy at all. So we've offered up a little multiple choice quiz, Jesse. Where do you think he is most disliked? His home state of Tennessee, Georgia, for obvious reasons, what he did at Florida, Bama, or Florida? How about this one right here? What's e. that? All of the above. <laughs> He's beating up on Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama a bunch, and there are pockets in Florida that don't like him too much either. There are big pockets of Florida that don't like him very much. Yates, and that was nearly intercepted. Great coverage that time by Darian Stewart, who has played a tremendous game for the Gamecocks. He's been everywhere, hasn't he? Playing free safety, roving around. The South Carolina defense does such a good job of really disguising their coverages, but the biggest reason why is because they have smart players back there. Darian Stewart, as well as their strong safety, Emmanuel Cook, have both played phenomenal football games today. All right, you're out of timeouts if you're North Carolina. Do you expect them to see maybe start to go down the field a little bit more? They well, they're going to have to. You're right. They're not going to have very much choice now. No timeouts left, so you got to get this thing cranking. <laughs> Had to go underneath that time. That'll be a first down. That'll be a lot more than a first down with White. Dropped the ball, and I think the Tar Heels got it back. There might have been little in there to help White out on the recovery. That's a 33-yard gain. Oh, man, you have a heart attack every time. You watch these guys play. It's unbelievable. Johnny White makes such a big play on the checkdown pass and almost loses it again. Looks like Darian Stewart was the one who stripped the ball. We just talked about what kind of game he's had. But Carolina able to jump back on. North Carolina, excuse me. There are two Carolinas playing today. You know what? That's the first time either one of us have done that, so I think that's okay. Yates looking for the end zone for Knicks. Oh, and another great catch by the Tar Heels. They have had some spectacular catches. In coverage was Edison Williams. I don't know if he could have done a whole lot better. 
Hakeem Nix going up against an inexperienced freshman, Addison Williams. You see him here at the bottom of the screen. Just run the inside release go route. And this is just a big body play. Goes up, strong hands, able to pluck the ball at its highest point, tuck it in, and convert a huge, huge play for North Carolina. Five inches taller and 40 pounds heavier. Nix's eighth catch for 115 yards. Design draw, touchdown for Yates. This play is so well executed for North Carolina. They fake a toss, and then it's TJ Yates just running a keeper around. They're going to fake the sweep. He pulls right around. They got a pulling lineman. That's his right tackle, Garrett Reynolds. He's able to follow him in for the big score. The funny thing is, Jesse, one of the strongest parts about North Carolina coming into this game was their kicking game that has betrayed them today. Yeah. Missed field goal and a botched extra point. So you can make an argument what the score would look like without it. Now they're going to go for two here. Said Foster in motion. Let's Looking go. that way all the way. And they do not convert. But with 3.03 to go, now comes the interesting decision for Butch Davis. He does not have a timeout. Does he have to try the onside kick here? Well, the way his defense is playing, I'm not so sure he does. It depends on what kind of two-minute package he has on offense. Without Brandon Tate, I don't know how effective that can be. That, that's a decision for him to make right now. I think you have to assume Steve Spurrier is going to run the football and try to milk this thing out as much as he can. But all of a sudden now, we're in a one-position game. They need one score, one touchdown. And they've tied, and they get the extra point, they're winning. I'm sure that's a conversation they're having right now on the sidelines. A lot of folks having conversations about that race in Charlotte, Brent Musburger. The battle for the NASCAR Nextel Cup moves to Charlotte for a primetime battle tonight. Teammates Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson lead the chase. It's coming up right after football on ABC, the Bank of America 500. Well, this is an interesting decision. Big, big meeting over there on the North Carolina sideline. Now, you got a great kicker in Barth. Certainly has the skills to do this. If it is indeed going to be an onside kick, which, of course, the Gamecocks are anticipating as they have to do. Yeah, they are. They're lined up to defend against it right now. They have their hands team on the football field. Everybody with the best hands on South Carolina is on the field right now trying to defend against this. you got to think North Carolina going for the onside kick. A guy like Connor Barth also, someone certainly capable of converting this for North Carolina. And this sure looks like an onside kick, doesn't it? And you see it go out of bounds. Eric Norwood is in on that play. Well, there's no surprise, and it's North Carolina ball. Not one well, minute. Yeah, I didn't think. I, I, I didn't understand that signal. Like we got excited about it, but I don't. Yeah, I, I think that might be the correct call. Let's find out. Here's the referee, Matt Austin from the SEC. The ball was touched by the receiving team, then went out of bounds. South Carolina's ball, first and ten. That's kind of what I thought. I think Eric Norwood, you know, Steve Spurrier put the starters out there, and one of them comes through. Yeah, and, and funny enough, I just said the guys with the best hands on the team are on the field. Eric Norwood is one of those guys, and that's a scary ball. It's dribbling. You don't know when it's going to bounce up. Could bounce up, hit you in the face. But fortunately for South Carolina, Eric Norwood, the last one to touch it as it goes out of bounds. Uh, Nick's nearly got this 88 for the Tar Heels. That was a Ponte Pronto, a quick bounce. And Norwood couldn't quite handle it, but Gamecocks have the ball. And they've got to turn this around really fast. And that's one way to do it. You know, South Carolina has done nothing in this half. I mean, nothing in this half on offense. Yeah, you look at these drives. Look at all the three and out starting here all the way down. That's poor production offensively. They've been trying to run the football a bunch. An interception on the first series. Four punts next, but right now, no timeouts for North Carolina. They cannot stop the clock. And Spurrier is milking it right now. you got to anticipate he's going to continue running the football. 
Even if he gets in third and long? No question. It's going to be third and long. That play is absolutely crushed. Darrell Mapp, 13th tackle of the game for him. What a game he's had, hasn't he? He came into this game third in the ACC in tackles. He's been all over the field today. He reads this play coming in the left side of your screen. Corey Boyd tries to cut back. Bam! Runs right into the former walk-on, Darrell Mapp. His nickname on this team is Tough Guy. And you see a little bit of that right there. A walk-on. Can you imagine that so many schools whiffed on him? He carries that around with him, though. He told us he remembers that. Every day he remembers being a walk-on. One out of 11 third downs. Biggest one of the game for the Gamecocks. If they convert it, they win. Boy, look at the effort. They may now have a chance to go ahead and go for it here on fourth down. Boyd, a spectacular effort of 12 yards. You think to yourself, Steve Spurrier maybe rolling the dice trying to throw a football. Really, he's just throwing a quick little screen. It's basically the extension of a draw play. And Corey Boyd, very hard running. He's had a great game today as well. Over 100 yards rushing on the day for him, as you see. And all of a sudden, there's some thoughts here for South Carolina. Well, I think you got to go for it here, don't you? If you make it, you absolutely win the game. As it is, you're going to run the clock down. Maybe you take a timeout here. That's probably what he's going to do because he's standing next to the official. I think at fourth and three, you got to go for it. North Carolina does not have a timeout. Well, I'll ask you this, Jesse. And we don't have that immediately available to us. I would love to know when was the last time a Steve Spurrier coach team was shut out in the second half. Now, they are in a position to win this football game, obviously, but that's a shocking thought to me. It's been a tale of two halves, hasn't it? You see this offense, South Carolina, in the first half, throwing the football, playing in rhythm, making plays. In the second half, playing so much closer to the vest, running the football, but also throwing an interception, making mistakes. So much closer to the vest, running the football, but also throwing an interception, making mistakes. And really, North Carolina has been able to capitalize on that in the second half. It's been totally a tale of two different halves. Well, this is a little bit reminiscent of the Georgia game in some ways. They grind out victories now in South Carolina. They gut them out. And actually, it has all the way back to over a year versus the Bulldogs. But the Georgia game was very low scoring earlier this year. I mean, this is a different style. This isn't, they call it cock and fire, but it's, it really isn't yet what he dreams it to be. It's not there yet. I think it's getting better the last two weeks. It's looked that way. Today they played a lot closer. So the, the decision is also, they've got an excellent field goal kicker in Ryan Suckup. But man, if this thing gets blocked. If they hit this, the game's out of range. That's the idea. They go for the block. They don't get it. And there you go. Know, good. From 48. Still a chance for North Carolina. <laughs> oh, wow. Ryan Sucka hits the right crossbar. And now North Carolina will get the football back. With only 41 seconds, they need a touchdown. Watch the ball. Right off that right crossbar. The bounce is no good. Coach Spurrier knows it. I like the call personally. I like the call. Try to put the game out of reach while you can. Well, I agree. I have nothing wrong with that. You know, and if you go for it there and you run the football and you don't get it, you give North Carolina the ball back in the same spot anyway. I thought maybe going for it, but it would absolutely seal the game. But again, North Carolina, no timeouts. Wow, Johnny White has played really well at the tailback spot in this half. And we talked about the kicking game being a problem for North Carolina today. Connor Barth had a streak of 19 straight field goals, longest in the nation. Well, that's over. And then an extra point is completely lost by North Carolina. So that's four points. Coming back to hurt them a little bit right now, oh, isn't it? Time. And that is not the, the facet of football that you thought would come back and haunt North Carolina in this game. And that forced the Tar Heels to go for two off of their last touchdown. They didn't make that either. Plenty of room to run, but he can't really do very much of that because he has to stop the clock with a timeout and does. Greg Little. 
T.J. Yates rolling to his go, right, go, go. showing you at his athleticism. He was a basketball player in high school. He was recruited. You see the athleticism making a play, getting the ball to his playmaker, Greg Little. South Carolina doing some very last-second substituting. Down the middle, it's open, and that's a first down and again stops the clock. Catch made by Kenton Thornton, his first catch of the ball game. Kenton Thornton, the sophomore, now making his presence felt in this game. Look at T.J. Yates just marching his guys down. Remember, this guy doesn't have a lot of experience. He looks very poised right now, though. Try to get out of bounds, and Little didn't get out of bounds! I don't believe that! Now he does! He had to take that out of bounds right away! Well, I'll tell you what, had he not got out of bounds there, this ball game is over right now. You see the inexperience again, and I don't mean to keep harping on this, but these are just prime examples we've seen all game of young players who haven't been there before and don't know how to play in these types of situations. They don't know how to finish games. The only way you can learn is go out by going out and doing it. You gotta go to the end zone now. Can't be even if you get a first down, it's gonna be difficult to get everybody down there. Although we'll stop the clock. South Carolina's defense playing way deep in a prevent type look. Going for it. Going for a tie. Five seconds, four seconds left. And the last chance for TJ Yates. It'll come down to this right here, the last play of the game. Unfortunate to see Darian Stewart, who has been magnificent for South Carolina, shaken up on the play. And he's been everywhere. Darian Stewart breaking up passes, making tackles, forcing fumbles. The guy's been all over the field. The secondary really has done a nice job, especially at the safety position for South Carolina today. He's got to come out of the game. So they've just lost on the final play of the game coming up. Somebody who has had a huge day for them, an interception. He has knocked the ball loose a couple of times on North Carolina runners. But he must come out of the game since he required attention from the medical staff. Today's Chevrolet players of the game from South Carolina, Chris Smelly, three touchdowns, a career high, and Greg Little, eight touches, even played at the quarterback position a couple of times in the first half, 79 yards and one of the North Carolina touchdowns. Today's Chevrolet's player of the game, in recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund as we get ready for what is likely the last play of the game. In regulation. It's going to be short of the end That's zone. not going to get there. Nope. And right at the one, it's incomplete. Wouldn't have been a touchdown anyway, and this one is over, and South Carolina escapes.